right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stream. Glad you could join us today. Uh, I apologize for this having popped up on everybody's notifications way too early. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to turn... Let me know if the audio sounds all right to you. I think this should be okay. I'm actually going to turn the game down just a smidge. Yeah, there we go. That should be that should be fine. As you can see, it's playing some lovely late 1900s animations of various robots that you may see in this game. And uh, yeah, this is a good one. So this is a Mech Command game from the mid 1990s. I believe this one came out in '96, and it is an entry or a a spin-off or what have you in a series called Earth Siege, which then went on to be Star Siege and went on to be Tribes from there. Uh, so this this universe started with a game called Metal Tech Earth Siege and then evolved into... It's going to keep replaying the intro. I'm going to cancel through that real quick. So it started off, as I said, as a, a mech game called Metal Tech Earth Siege, which was sort of an early competitor to, like, the Battle Tech Mech Warrior games. And then it developed from... That, Earth Seeds, Earth Siege 2, Star Siege, it developed into Tribes, which was a first person shooter. Um, very like vertical, high speed, low drag kind of arena shooter game. And it also spawned this Mission Force Cyberstorm and Cyberstorm 2, which are turn based hex grid strategy games based on the same universe. It's all very cool, it's all very interesting. None of those games really have a whole lot to do with each other, they're all kind of different. But I think this is actually one of the strongest entries in the series, and I really enjoy it. Something tells me some of those mechs would not work. What do you mean? They look, look at this guy, look at the Hades here, look at this, look at the Nihilus, look at it, it's, it's gorgeous. See, it's got, it's got whiskers, it's got more whiskers, it's got missile pods between its toes. What do you mean it wouldn't work? It's fantastic, it's perfect design. Absolutely amazing. All right, so we're going to start a career, and we're going to start on hard because I've played this game a lot. So if I get owned, it's totally my fault. All right. So we have a lovely intro showing up on the screen. Directed from Main Synthetic Intelligence, Unitech Command, Promotion Ensign. Excerpt from Base Commander Marcus Burrell's address to new recruits, Mox Tan's Herc Base. Now you belong to me. From the moment you stepped off that shuttle, you became the property of Unitech. You'd think that because you survived the Academy that I should be impressed. Here's a hard dose of reality. Unitech does not give a damn about you. All Unitech cares about is the bottom line. Are you making us money or costing us money? At this moment, these machines you see here are worth more to this consortium than your lives. It is your job to change this. Ensigns are allowed to own three derms and three hercs. You've been assigned two hercs linked to two bioderms. Use your personal credits however you see fit. You prove to us that you can make Unitech more profitable without blowing yourself up, and maybe we'll let you command more. If you screw up, we'll strand you on a barren moon somewhere with a beacon strapped around your neck guaranteed to attract every cybrid in the sector. Welcome to the frontier, gentlemen. I love this intro because it immediately tells you what you're in for. You're working for Unitech. Unitech is a corporation, a, a, a consortium, with a private military of its own and an academy. It does not care about you. People die in this job all the time. And your job is to make the company money using military force. You immediately have all the information you need to jump into this game and get right down to it. All right, bioderm assignment. So, human physiology simply didn't keep pace with its technology. We created machines and weapons that required superhuman reflexes and abilities. What was our solution? To create beings that could be directly bio-linked to the machines. Proto-human clones were used industrially for centuries to operate heavy equipment in hostile environments. As bioderm technology improved, it became feasible to use them for military purposes as well. Though bioderms have limited higher thought processes, they can function quite successfully with human supervision and guidance. <laughs> Ensign Yar Civic. I think they're setting us up to fail. Look, they only allow us to grow three bioderms, and the only genetic material we have access to is crap. Look at these protoderm faces. I've seen more intelligence in a parked hover car. And we're supposed to take these guys on missions? Give me a break. 
Alright, so, and these are our Hercs. So you can see the scale that we're working on here, right? Here's a guy. These are the two smallest Hercs in the game. These are your, your Hercs, your Herculeans, your giant robots. Uh, the Shadow was originally intended as an exploration vehicle, one of two Hercs with an extensive sensor array. Sensor arrays allow broad terrain mapping and remote targeting of the enemy. Since being pressed into military service, the Shadow has been outfitted with energy weapons and missile pods. Then we have the Remora. The Remora was initially designed as an escort vehicle for the Heavy Hercs. Since the Remora's deployment at the beginning of the Third Cybrid War, it has proven especially useful as a fast assault Herc. Some Herc commanders have successfully equipped the Remora with mining pods, capitalizing on its speed for mining in hazardous areas. So yeah, so these are the two basic smallest Hercs, which we have access to. And this is, I did not mean to click that, but okay. We're launching right into the tutorial mission. All right, so uh, we'll talk about the base later. It's too, there's no time to explain. We're going right into it now. All right, so our objective is to destroy the cybered structure on the planet of Daryl. You can see we can zoom out a little bit like that. And this is what a map looks like. So here we have our Remora, the Seiki Sunfire, led, controlled by a Model 101 right here. We have our Fast Shadow, controlled by a Model 001 with his absolutely gormless thousand yard stare. This is kind of a busy UI because there's a lot of stuff going on. So down here we have battery power, and they actually, right up here, you'll see a little tooltip pop up for everything, which is very useful. We can click to choose movement, and you can see that highlights some of that uh, yellow, right? This is our reactor, this is our battery. Basically, this is the energy that regenerates this is storage, which regenerates at a different, slower rate. Over here, we can see the weapons we have accessible. We have missile SBs and SE-400 lasers on this shadow. Systems. We can see our systems. We do have an ore extractor, a Bertrand. And we can have shields. We have 300 total shield points divided between our six shield facings. And we can set them wherever we like. Or we can equalize the shields. We can also click on the wireframe model here, and this is one of the really cool parts of this game. I think. This wireframe model shows you all of the different components of your Herc. All of these components can be damaged individually. When your Herc takes fire that penetrates the shields and does damage to it, it will damage components individually. Components that are destroyed are removed. They're knocked out for the rest of the mission, and then you have to replace them when you go back to base, which costs money. So, the drive, if your drive is knocked out, you can't move anymore. If your legs are knocked out, if one leg is knocked out, uh, your movement degra is degraded. I think if two legs are knocked out, your Herc is destroyed, if I recall correctly. If the reactor goes, your Herc explodes. If the battery goes, uh, you lose your battery. I don't think you explode, technically. If your shield is destroyed, obviously you lose your shields. If your sensor is destroyed, you lose your targeting bonus and your ability to see more than a couple of hexes. Your targeting computer removes your bonus. If your life support is destroyed, your pilot dies, and the Herc is rendered inoperable, but it can be salvaged if you win the mission. Obviously, if you lose weapons, you lose the ability to fire those weapons, and if your internals are destroyed, then that, that system is disabled. It's actually really pretty good. Okay, so, we are in... Uh, you have to steer around with the arrow keys. This is before WASD was standardized, so... Uh, we've got our fast shadow here. Let's run over here. And you can see, if you right-click on ground, it will show you the height, it will show you how many points of reactor energy it takes to move on, and if there is a cover bonus, then it will tell you what the cover bonus is. So on icy ground, for example, you have an offense and defense penalty, and you can see that gets higher when you're on ice itself. You can also see these Z-levels, these Z-levels matter because they provide cover to you, they make it harder for people to shoot you. Um, I guess these aren't, so these aren't boulders, they don't technically have a cover bonus, but like, for example, if I'm in this fast shadow, and I'm over here, then somebody who's on the other side of this ridge won't be able to draw a line of sight to me, won't be able to target me, and if I was, you know, like, up here and had one level, somebody over here would have a penalty to shooting me because there's a ridge in the way. Warning. Enemy detected. Okay, so we have detected our first enemy. This is a cybered light turret. Just a random, just a random turret sitting in the middle of the map, you know? Yeah, Sierra did good. 
Okay, now here's one interesting thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to the battle menu, I'm gonna go to minimap, and I'm gonna hit show ore locations. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because ore mining is super valuable. Now that's just a turret. This is just a training mission. We don't really have to worry about the turret. But we're gonna go steal all the money that we can because we are hyper-capitalist pig dogs in this game. And so money is very important. Uh, the cyber turret is shooting at us, but fortunately its accuracy is very low. We're gonna turn on our ore extractor, and now, now, I love this game, but I need you to prepare yourself for the worst noise ever put into a video game, okay? Just be prepared. That noise happens every time you mine a hex of ore. This brown stuff is ore, the brown spiky stuff. That noise will happen every time you move over a patch of ore. And you'll do that a lot because that's how you make most of your money. It's the worst sound known to man. Hey, Coax. Okay, yeah, so it sounds okay to you because I have turned the sound in this game down. Uh, at full volume, it is a nightmare. Without surcease. Uh, you may also notice, like, right there I jumped onto this patch of ore, it said it was 30 units, but I got 27. That's because we're using shitty low-grade ore extractors that are only 90% efficient. So, you can get 100% efficiency, but you don't start with it, because at the start, all of your technology sucks. Okay, let's sweep on south. I'm going to move my shields over that way because that's where the cyber turret is. Um, one thing that you have to keep in mind, uh, well, there's two things, actually. When you are defending yourself, you can crouch. Crouching takes some reactor power, and it means you'll take some reactor power to stand up, but it lowers your target profile so you're harder to hit. Also, manipulating your shields is very important. Something you have to keep in mind is if you have reactor power left at the end of the turn and a cyber shoots at you, there is a chance, based on piloting, which you can see, this is the Bioderm screen. You can control a lot of stuff about the Bioderm from here. I'll talk about that in a second. There's a chance that your Herc will rotate to face them and fire back. Um, generally, that's a good thing, but if you're like, if you're expecting an attack from the rear, for example, and you have your shields full to the rear, and someone shoots you and your Herc turns around to shoot back, um, you're fucked because all of your shields are in the rear. So you have to make sure that you control when that happens which I am not perfect at, and it might happen to me, and I might be fucked, but we'll see. Yay, more ore. Let's go mine more horrible noises. Okay, so there. I got shot, but my shields regenerated. Your shields regenerate at a certain rate every turn based on how powerful they are. You can right-click on the shield. It shows you regeneration rate on this shield is 30 per turn, so I get back 30 points every turn unless the shield is destroyed. So just be sure you are a commander and the Bioclones pilot Max. Do those guys level up or matter at all? Yes, they do. Let's talk about the Biodermes. The Biodermes are artificial life forms grown for the purpose of piloting Hercs. They have an age. Their age increases with every mission. Each year is 10 months long because fuck you, that's why. So this Bioderm will live for 30 months and then die. It has a rank. They will rank up every mission. And as they rank up, their percentage skills will increase. Uh, you can also see the effect that their life support has. Over here they have three stats, health, stability, and toxins. Toxins build up when you give them jack-up treatments, which make their skills better, but also toxify them and lower their stability. If their stability reaches zero, they die. If their health reaches zero, they die. If their toxin maxes out, their health and stability start going down. So there's a, there's a bit of a kind of a situation here where you're like, well, older Bioderms who have been on more missions will have better skills, but they'll also be near the end of their useful life. So sometimes, sometimes, your veteran Bioderms are the ones that you want to shoot full of drugs and then send into suicide missions because they're going to die anyway. And that's what Bioderms live for, you know? Uh, and yes, the, uh, the heads do indeed move. 
Uh, the biodermes are incredibly important. The biodermes are super valuable, just like the Herks are. Alright, so we're gonna send little Seiki Sunfire down here to go shoot at this turret. So, we can target him. You can see, once again, up at the top, you can see our chance to hit. 78% with the lasers, 53% with the cannons, 82% with the missiles. Every weapon has very different stats. So, the SE400 laser cannon uh, does 50 damage to shields, only 10 damage to armor, costs 20 energy to fire, max range of 10, yada yada. The 50mm autocannon fires twice, or can fire twice, doesn't cost any energy to fire, only does 32 damage versus armor, and does 6 penetrating damage, which means if you fire it against something that has shields up, it still does damage, but only a little. And the missile SPs are very similar to the autocannons. They only fire once, um, they do more damage, and they have much longer range and can be fired indirectly. So, we're gonna shoot our lasers. If you just click, this guy will fire his weapons in a semi-random order. He will tend to favor weapons that penetrate shields, since there are shields up facing him. But, uh, otherwise he'll, he'll fire at random. We're gonna walk around the other side, because you can see this turret has moved its shields to face us. And then we're gonna shoot a laser at it. Okay, so we've penetrated the shields, which means it's time to fire the autocannons and missiles. There we go. Meantime, let's mine some more ore. Because ore is money. And, uh-oh, there's a cyber down here. Also, that battle music is really kicking off. Just absolutely hopping. Battle. That is the loudest I may have ever heard it. We're going to move our shields down and we're going to crouch because that Arachnus is going to come after us with uh, four laser cannons. Okay, so we took some fire. Our shields are holding, however, so once again we're going to run around to the back of this thing. We're going to kill it with our cannons and then we're going to move over in this direction so we can help against the Arachnus. Uh, we've got some decent little cover here, so that's good. Uh, I would like to finish extracting ore before I get shot by a mechanical spider. So let's see if we can get that done. Okay, so good job destroying the turret. Return to your Herc carrier for evacuation. I could just leave now. This is the tutorial mission, that's all I have to do, but there's a cybrid over here, and murdering cybrids is... Half of what I do with life. Okay, so there's the cyber. Uh, once again, I'm going to run around behind it because it just shot at me. Okay, took two shots to take down its shield, and then I can just click on it to empty my armor-busting weapons. Perfect. Cyber threat eliminated to leave the map? No, no, of course not. There's money to be made. All right, we're gonna turn that off because it maxes out at 400 anyway. We'll send the fast shadow back towards the carrier. And then you, sir, need to get the rest of this delicious, delicious money for me. There we go, that's right. Cash money cheddar. Alright, up, oh, I think that's a square down there, isn't it? Yep, that's got some that's got some ore. Does that not have any ore on it? That looks like it's got ore on it. I guess not. Okay, I think that's all the ore on the map. I think there's only two fields in this mission. I wait a second. There's definitely more ore down there. Look, it's even on the mini-map. See that little tiny vague pale speck? There it is. Hold on. Hang on a second. Give me that. Give me that money. Okay. And we can leave the battle. Well done, everybody. Ah, there was more ore somewhere else. I was wrong. There was more ore. Is the company rewarding you for your ruthless mining exploitation of opportunities? Absolutely. All right, so we destroyed the remaining structure. We mined 693 units of ore, which gives us 6,930 credits. The rest of the ore on the map was auto-mined. When it's auto-mined, you get a smaller percentage. So... 
there was another like 600 units of ore on the map that I didn't get to, and so I only got like less money for it. I got 2,000 credits for destroying two cybrids. My bonus for the mission was 3,500. So all told, I made almost 14,000 bucks, which was 76% of the possible. I have been promoted to the rank of unit leader. And you can see, uh, this mission took three months. Boink. So my cybrids, uh, my biodermes, sorry, are that much closer to death. And model 101 has been promoted for its role in murder. And we have another promotion. Okay, apparently, some of you encountered active cybrids in the training zones. Get used to it. Perhaps some real equipment will get you jacked up about being here. I encourage you to spend every credit making premium hercs and biodermes, because you won't need any credits if you fail. Now pick up your promotions and get back out there. The recruits don't need to know about stolen BGMs. BGM stands for Biogenetic Matrix, by the way. It's what they use to make biodermes out of. I'm more interested in this Prometheus, the central cybrid mind. No word of it for centuries, and then Prometheus code appears in downed cybrids when BGM samples, samples are stolen. It's too coincidental. So, the base genetic matrix inventory. <laughs> Interview with Hurt Commander Frank Tarsus. They say it's an honor to have your genes selected for the BGM bank. I say it's crap. We never really die. Imagine an army of meat robots, jacked up, bio-linked, and wearing your face, all being ordered around by young greenhorns fresh from mommy's teat. Sounds like someone's idea of hell, if you ask me. And this information is crucial to us. The Cybrids have never been interested in the bioderms before. If the Cybrids have taken BGM samples, we must assume they're studying them for strategic weaknesses. If they have some other purpose, I'm afraid to know what it is. So, yes. All of these clones, these bioderms, are made out of genetic material taken from Herc commanders. Uh, and they're used to pilot our Hercs. And the Cybrids, who are robots and don't use bioderms, have now stolen some samples from the BGM bank in order to do something with them. Who knows what? Do our mechs have cute mouse faces? <laughs> okay. And now we have new Herx Unlocked. So the Ogre has enough energy-based attacks to break through many types of shielding and still deliver a double ballistic salvo. It's the most independent Herc available to the unit leader. The Sensei is what the Shadow should have been. Bigger, tougher, more weapon types. It was designed with the Command Biodrome in mind. It offers speed, sensors, varied weapons, and some protections. The Giant is outfitted exclusively with ballistic weapons. It's best used in tandem with an energy weapon perk like the Ogre. You to command more and biodermes. And as you, as you've just heard, our rank entitles us to command more Herks and Biodermes. So let's take a look at the Herc Bay. Herc Bay. New technology available. So over here you can manage the Herks that you have. We have a Seiki Sunfire and a Fast Shadow. If you click on here, it brings up the wireframe. We saw this in the mission. You can repair damaged parts. You can sell the Herc. You can go back. And of course you can change and upgrade parts. Um, every single part of these Hercs is modifiable. Uh, right now we don't have any other reactors available, we don't have any drives available, we could actually downgrade the drive for less movement if we wanted to. It would be cheaper. But there's no reason to do that. Um, you can upgrade the sensors, so right now we have the Scout Sensor 30.6, we could upgrade to the 41.1, which would give us uh, one more hex of vision. And when you use, I think it uses one more energy. Yeah, it uses one more energy. Or we could shift to the standard 15.1, which is objectively worse. And there's no reason you would ever do that, but it does cost money because Unitech charges you money for everything you do. Because they're a corporation. That's what they're for. But let's go back and let's purchase a new Herc because we have several available. So we have the Fast Shadow. That's one we already have. They have, there is the Shadow Wraith, which is a scout configuration with Electron Flux Whips and Missile Launchers. Uh, elf weapons ignore shields, which is very handy, but uh, they have almost no range, so you have to be literally at point blank in order to use them at all, and their damage output is unimpressive. Uh, we also have the Shadow Ghost, which has no weapons whatsoever, and nothing upgraded except the maximum possible sensitive level. So it has a speed rating of almost 700, compared to the Fast Shadow's 468. Um, that's pretty much all it does, is it runs around with a sensor and uh, tries not to die. 
We have the Seiki Sunfire, which is the Remora, one we already own. We have the Sensei, which is basically a bigger, slower shadow. So the way the Sensei works is it's tougher. It has thicker armor, um, has more hit points on its components. Uh, it carries a much heavier shield, so it's much tougher. It also has more weapons. It has a weapon configuration roughly equivalent to the Remora, actually a little bit bigger. These slots are allowed to carry slightly larger energy weapons, if I recall correctly. Um, and it has four device slots, rather than just one or two. Uh, and so it's designed to walk around in the middle of a bunch of other Hercs and provide them with vision using its large scout sensors. But we're not interested in that right now, we're interested in the Ogre. Uh, the Ogre is a little bit expensive. We have $24,000. Buying a stock Ogre will cost almost 19000 of them. Um, the Ogre has four energy weapon slots and two cannons, so no missiles. Extra energy weapons, which means it can break shields very effectively. And then it doesn't do a ton of damage past shields. So, it's... Uh, the Ogre is very useful. As the uh, the briefing said, it's probably the most independent perk available. Um, it's relatively fast. Uh, relatively tough at this point in the game. And uh, it does a decent amount of damage, although it often can't kill medium-sized cybrids by itself because it just doesn't have the damage output with its cannons to do so. Uh, I'm not going to buy one just yet. Although, well, let me see. How much can I sell the, uh, how much can I sell this Remora for? I take it back. I'm going to buy one right now. I'm going to sell the Seiki Sunfire. Because I don't think Remoras are very useful overall. And we're going to buy the Ogre. And let's take a look at it. Uh, you can, by the way, rename Hercs. So, you can you can give them whatever names you want. You can also give Bioderms whatever names you want. So, if you want to be a Bioderm, I will make you a Bioderm. We're going to give this Herc a Flexive Drive. Uh, standard 18 centimeter armor is fine. Reactor is fine. Battery. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade the battery. That's not very expensive. The 1200 shield. Uh, that's fairly expensive, but it's a very valuable upgrade. We're going to go ahead and grab the 1,200-point shield. The sensor, I'm not too worried about. Targeting computer. We're going to upgrade to the maximum targeting computer, because plus 7% to hit is a fairly significant change. Uh, we're also going to go improved life support. So this will actually mean that if the Bioderm takes damage, life support will detoxify it and improve its health by one per turn. It does use a little bit of energy, um, but that's worth making the trade-off, I think. Hey, Skip, thanks for the five, my dude. Yeah, sure, I'll Bioderm you. We need a Garsamore class. Alright, uh, in terms of weapons. So we can upgrade these. We have four slots. So we come, come stock with a single band ECM, which reduces the opponent's chance to hit. That's good. I would also like to take a fueler device. So the, the uh, mining we were using before was the Bertrand Ore Extractor, which stores 400 units, 90% efficiency. We want a fueler device, which is 500 units with 100% efficiency, or a Maxim Extractor, which is 90% efficiency, but 1,600 storage. So a couple of Maxim Extractors can clear a map very effectively. Um, I think we're going to go fueler device. And we have 11,000 credits. We want to save some money to get a reasonable bioder. So I'm thinking probably... One fueler device is fine, and then let's go ahead and... Oof. I don't think I can afford to upgrade my lasers. So the SE 660 does uh, 75 shield damage at 15 range. The SE 1000 does 120 shield damage at 20 range. It's very, very powerful. Uh, I would like to upgrade to it, but I can't. What I will do instead is I will upgrade my cannons. So the 50 does 32 per shot, two shots. The 30 does 35 per shot, two shots. Max range of 10. Actually, the 50 has longer max range. Interesting. What does the 30 have over it? Uh, it has more ammo. And slightly higher damage. Okay, so I'm not going to upgrade the weapons on the Ogre just yet. Call the mech Scylla. Hey, Tor, thanks for the, thanks for the, the, uh, the bribe. Okay, we'll call this the Scylla for, uh, for Sestrar. 
and then we'll get a we'll go get a bioderm, shall we? We've got eleven thousand credits. Let's go to the bioderm facility. So, first of all, uh, you can train your bioderm. So this is model one hundred one. Uh, model 001, we're just gonna ditch, because it's not... We're gonna go to the recycling vat, we're gonna recycle Model 001. Its eyes stare deep into my soul, and I will never be happy as long as I know it still exists, so goodbye. Nice horrifying sound effects. You've got to love them. Alright, Model 101 we're actually gonna keep for right now. Um... It still has some use in it, and its skills are a little bit better. We're gonna heal it, but we're gonna go buy a new Bioderm. So, there's a lot of Bioderms available to purchase, ranging from Tola, the 50,000 credit top-of-the-line Bioderm, all the way down to, well, this thing, which costs 500 bucks and is approximately a chimp. I can right-click to view the hit donor's history. Does that actually work in this version? It does not. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so in the original game, the original game on the CD had a separate, like, help me file program where when you clicked on stuff, it would pop up, like, actual documents written in-universe that had all kinds of information, and unfortunately the GOG version doesn't have those, so that's a shame. How many war crimes is there? Many. All right, um, we've got $11,000, so let's go to one of my favorite uh, early bioderms, which is Kadisha. Kadisha's not too expensive. She has a decent age, albeit not a very long one. But the nice thing about Kadisha is she has a very high p starting piloting rating. So is a good option. Um, Koros has pretty low stats, but is good at advanced tech. Advanced tech is weapons like EMPs. Uh, there's certain weapons that don't fall into the standard categories that are governed by the advanced tech skill. Koras is basically good at piloting and advanced tech, and that's it. Uh, Persis, likewise. Uh, Persis is also decent at energy. Uh, Kyoko is a good cheap early buy, because she has decent energy rating and decent piloting rating. So for a... for an ogre, I think I might buy a Kyoko. Uh, or a Kadisha will give me better cannon fire, but slightly worse energy. Actually, no. For an Ogre, I'm gonna buy a Jean. Because Jean has good energy, good cannon, decent piloting. Yeah, let's create a Jean. We're gonna do a little bit of training. We're gonna pump up energy. We're gonna pump up cannon and piloting. And we are going to name this bio. This is going to be Schizoritz. All right, Schizoritz, there you are. You are in the game. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. I need to click the link. There we go. All right, Schizoritz, we are linking you to Scylla. There you go. You're a pilot. You're in the army now. Basically the mech version of Jagged Alliance. Kind of. A little bit. Okay. And we've got, uh, we've got 1,600 bucks left. So let's go back to the Herc Bay. Uh, and see if there's some kind of upgrade we can do. So Scylla has a fueler device and an ECM. Fast Shadow. Uh, with 1,600 bucks, what can we do to help you? We can take the reinforcement off your legs, because if you're ever being shot, you're going to die no matter what. It does not matter. Uh, we can upgrade your sensor to the Scout 41.1. Um, you are never really going to be required to fight much. But let's upgrade that to a fueler device, and put a second fueler device on you. So basically, we have one Herc that can fight, and then we have one Herc that can run around mining and scouting, is what we've got here. And then with my last 200 bucks, let me see if I can upgrade Model 101. Uh, Model 101, I cannot afford to upgrade, but you can see, Model 101 went up to rank A2, and her skills increased. By like, one or two points each. Pretty good. Pretty good. Hmm. 
mech games are a mixed bag, to be honest. I really like this mech game. Okay, so, uh, let's go ahead and make sure Model 101 is linked to the Fast Shadow. And let's go make some money! So, here we can, we can review all of various tutorials, and we can also review previous promotion videos. And we can select missions. Missions are randomly generated. Uh, except this one always exists. Destroy Cybern CC. If we complete this mission, so we are in the Paracelsus system, if we destroy the Cybern Command Center, then we move immediately from this system, the first system, to the second system. There are three systems in the game. Once we destroy all three Cybern Command Centers, we win. But we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to get paid, which means we want to mine ore. Uh, you may notice the bonuses are highly variable, and they are on several different worlds. So let's look at this one on Dural. We've been to Dural before. We need to mine 500 units of ore to get our bonus. Ore covers about 4% of the map. Intelligence reports a very low cybrid presence, which means probably there's only like one or two cybrids there, which should be fine. Uh, every world has its own unique characteristics. On Dural, gravity is 100%, so movement is not affected. There is no atmosphere, which means if your life support is destroyed or even badly damaged, the, side, the Bioderm dies immediately. And uh, shields are much more resistant to damage on this world than normal, and that's good because we bought our ogre the high-level shields. The fourth mining mission looked best. Uh, yeah, well, so we can go look at the other mining missions. So this one on Parsis. Uh, cybrids are present, but not in great strength. So that means there are some cybrids around. They're probably just not super, super dangerous. Ore covers about 5% of the map. To be honest, we don't really have enough ore extractors to mine out a whole map anyway. So that's not a big deal. Uh, you move a little bit slower on this world. The atmosphere is highly poisonous, so your guys will die immediately. And there's no shield effect. Uh, other missions, there's also a mission on Mardala, which lasts for three months. And on this world, gravity is half normal, so you move quite a bit more quickly. Uh, the atmosphere is still poisonous, and the electromagnetic field is uh, also within normal parameters. Sometimes the cyber presence is a lie. Sometimes it is, but usually it's re fairly reliable. Uh, what are cybrids even? Cybrids are robots. They are evil robots who want to kill you and steal your vital juices. Uh, I'm going to take this mission first, because I just want a little bit of money to kit out at least one more Herc before we start actually fighting. So, we are going to launch for Daryl. Launch initiated. And we get a lovely little video of us flying through space. Okay, so, our objective, mine 500 units of ore. We're gonna pull back a little bit so we can look around. We've got some ore down here. So we've got, we've got 1,500 units of ore carrying capacity available. We're gonna get our fast shadow down over here. Oh, yep, that's a lovely ore field. Love to see it. You can also rotate the map, like that. So if you ever have trouble, you know, if, like, if we're looking like this, and I go, oh man, I can't really click on that hex, it's kind of challenging. You can just rotate around so you can click on it. We're gonna get our uh, fast shadow into cover. And then we're gonna take Scylla. This is ground with exposed rocks, so it has quite a high movement cost. And you can also see how the movement cost is different per Herc. So, for example, a level ground space costs 13 for Scylla, but for a uh, Fast Shadow, level ground only costs 4. Uh, I've also got Herc animation sped up. So you can see, hold on. Oh no, I don't. That's the normal speed. If I set things on detailed speed, then they would walk in a less silly way. Okay, you know what that noise means? That noise means there's a fucking cybrid somewhere mining our ore. And any ore a cybrid mines is ore we can't mine. So that means I need to find those bastards before they steal the money. In 
fact, I'm not even that worried about mining this ore myself right now. I can come back to it. I need to go find that Cybrid before he finishes stealing our ore. I, I suspect he's up this way. Yup, see there's a stripe cut through that ore field. There's a Cybrid up there mining it. How dare they, the bastards. How dare they? Select it over here. I need somebody with guns. Yep, there he is. That is a Spectre. Spectre V1. It's a very weak cyber. We should be able to kill it quite quickly once we get within range and line of sight. Uh, however, I still don't want to fight it with my fast shadow directly. I would like to get up there where I have some cover. Can't fire target blocked. I'm going to hit our, hit it with our missiles. Just to do a little bit of pierce damage. You can see how the color changes. Um, by the way, so these things, like these little pictures of the cybrids, um, the red the red haze indicates that line of sight is blocked. Uh, the color indicates overall status of the cybrid. Cybrids do not get detailed wire form models like we do, but they take damage in the same way. They have components. Those components can be destroyed. It is possible to, for example, destroy all of a cybrid's weapons and leave it helpless. Okay, so that cybrid is running. We shall pursue. Warning, enemy detected. Yep, enemy detected, that's right. 19% uh, to hit, 34% damage. Yikes, that's not very good. Um, I don't want to mine this ore. Okay, so it has fired at us. Fortunately, it has turned towards us a shield facing that is weaker. So let's close in. Let's, uh, let's pump some drugs into our, our pilot here. Uh, well, can't hit worth shit, but that's okay. Crouch down, see what happens. Okay, it also can't hit, so that's fine. Objective achieved. Uh, and that specter actually ran off the map, so it fled from us in fear, which is great, because that means we can just take all the ore for ourselves. We'll go ahead and equalize our shields. And let's lumber on over here and get ready to take all this delicious, delicious ore. Sometimes another cybrid comes back, so equalize your shield so you don't get shot in the back. Systems. And we'll do some peaceful mining. Is that ore? It's not ore. That's ore, though. Systems. Okay. I always try to get the edges first, just because it really annoys me to leave, like, one speck of ore by itself. Alright. There we are. Fantastic. All the money is mine. It belongs to me. No one else can have any. All money everywhere is property of Unitech Corporation. Embodied in my person. Is that 50 units? Okay, I don't want to step on that spot because I'll waste some of that. Grab that, and then you can go back over to that ore field. While you... Yoink, yoink. Uh, if you click this button, by the way, any orders that you gave last turn will be carried out. So, that guy's just gonna move by himself. Systems. And we'll grab that little speck of ore, and then let's head down this way, see if there's any other fields we can find, because we still have plenty of capacity. All 
right, any more ore fields? Not that we're finding so far. Uh, you may also notice that my battery is not regenerating. That is because uh, I'm using up all of my reactor. So, the battery can only really regenerate at any speed if reactor power is left at the end of the turn. So it is definitely possible to run yourself out of power, and that can limit how you're allowed to move or how many weapons you're allowed to fire, which can be uh, very annoying. Alright. I'd imagine the ore gets destroyed. If you destroyed it, would you have gotten its ore? No. Any ore that a cybered mines out from under you is lost forever. You can never get it back. It's terrible. It's just money gone. And every time I see money gone, I cry myself to sleep. Because money is all that a Unitech employee cares about. There's nothing more important in the universe than that sweet Cheddar. Let me turn that one back on. So I can make sure it's properly filled up. How much is that? 20 units? Okay, grab that 20. And then grab that 10. Great. You can grab that, and then your pull up so you can go back to the hurt carrier. The ore must flow. You hate this map. Wait till we get to Asheron. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, so the terrain, uh, the terrain in this game is not, like, I mean, let's face it, graphics are not this game's strong suit, but in its defense, it is a turn-based strategy game from 1996, so, you know. We cut slack here. Um, why did you not pick up... Oh, you're out of power. You're out of power and so cannot mine. There we go. Yeah, see, remember what I said about uh, running out of power in this game? Yeah, it just happened. We're not going to be able to mine everything, but we will mine up to our full limit. There we go. We are now full. And we'll leave the battle. Fantastic. So, uh, we mined 1,500 units of ore, which is all we could carry. We did not destroy any cybrids because he got away from us. Um, we didn't get the auto mine, unfortunately. Um, that's interesting. Normally, I think thought you would. Possibly I'm thinking about version 1.0 rather than version 1.1. Which is the version that uh, Gog sells. So maybe I don't get the auto mine on these missions if I don't uh, mine the rest of the ore. So that's a huge shame. But okay. But we made $28,000. So love that for us. Because that means we get to invest $28,000 more into more robots. <laughs> Thought the mining sound isn't that bad after a while. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. Uh, you can't accidentally shut, your, shut off your life support by wasting your battery. Correct. Uh, your life support will not automatically shut itself off. Plenty of TBS games from 96 that don't look legitimately visually offensive. I mean, I'll be honest, I think Cyberstorm in most cases doesn't look visually offensive, but some of the terrain graphics are pretty bad. Perfect. That's absolutely true. Uh, let's do a little bit more Herc upgrading real quick, since now we've got 28,000 bucks. Uh, we're gonna upgrade to SE 1000s, so that will upgrade our range and damage on this herd. Um, instead of SE 400s, we're going to give this, the, these lower slots, EMPs. EMPs have very short range, but they do a ton of damage. They're dependent on the advanced tech skill, so we'll have to make sure that our pilot for Scylla has advanced tech. Uh, and I think that was all that we really wanted to upgrade. I could reinforce the legs, but I'm not super worried about it. Um, and if we had extra money, we could go ahead and upgrade to 30mm chains, which would give us a little bit more damage, uh, but I'm not super concerned about it right now. We're going to put in a couple more fueler devices, just to make sure we have enough uh, mining capacity for the future. 
Fast Shadow we're probably not going to keep forever, so I'm not going to bother upgrading it much. Uh, and... I might actually buy a second Shadow for mining purposes. Yeah, let me buy a Shadow Ghost. And yeah, Flexo Drive, this is all fine. I'm actually going to leave its weapon base literally empty. And I'm going to equip it with uh, a couple fueler devices and then one Maxim Extractor, just for picking up, you know, what we can't get around to. Uh, I think it can't upgrade its reactor, can't upgrade its drive. Okay, so... Why is the Fast Shadow faster? It's carrying guns and stuff. Uh, I guess the Shadow Ghost does have an extra, an extra extractor in it, so yeah, that's slowing it down. If we emptied this slot, what happens to its speed? Oh yeah, yeah, it's the Maxim Extractor. The Maxim Extractor really slows it down a lot. Okay, that's fine. Put more fuelers on Fast Shadow. Yeah, unfortunately I only have four slots, so... Alright, I've got 7,500 space dollars. Head back to the Biodrome facility real quick. Uh, Model 101, shut up. You're not important. Uh, let's upgrade Skitzeritz's advanced tech abilities. And let's get a Biodrum. All we want here is piloting ability. So we just want the highest piloting we can get for the money, which I think is Persis. No, it's Kuras. Koras is the... Actually, Borok has 80. I forgot Borok had such high piloting. Uh, Borok's absolute trash with energy weapons, but he's really good with cannons. Uh, this makes him an excellent pilot for a giant, if you have a giant. Uh, who else has good piloting? A lot of 75s. Honestly, Kyoko is probably the best value. 60 piloting for $2,000. Let's go with that. This is going to be... Who was the second person who bribed me again? It was Tor, I think. I think Tor issued a bribe. Yeah. This is going to be Tor Nielsen. There we go. And we're going to upgrade piloting and nothing else. Alright, Tor. Get in the robot. Get in the robot, Shinji. And we'll take another mission. So as you can see, the missions that we didn't take are still there. They do shuffle occasionally, but not often. Uh, there's a mission on Tirith now. Tirith is an interesting map. Uh, Cyber's present, but not in great strength. So very low gravity, you move very quickly, and uh, your your biodermes age a lot more quickly when they're on Tirith. I think they have, it's like double or triple the normal aging speed. Uh, but let's go to... Uh, let's go to Parsis. It's a one one month mission, so we won't age all that much. We'll accept that. Also, did my hold on one second? Did any of my biodrums get promoted? No, because they didn't have any fighting. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, a planet that makes you age faster. That that's what it is. That that's what it is. It's a planet that makes you age. Actually, it doesn't make you age faster. It makes biodermes age faster. So you put some kind of fast aging juice in the biodermes, presumably. All right, so here we are, mine 500 units of ore. As usual, um, our actual goal here is to kill the uh, enemy cybrids uh, quickly so that we can then mine all the ore in peace without having to worry about them stealing our ore. And fortunately, uh, we have found a cybrid. So. We're going to walk right up close. So you can see right there he turned. Yeah, he turned to face me because I shot at him. Uh, Shadow Ghost doesn't have any guns. Yeah, I, I know you detected that enemy, actually. I, I noticed that. My first clue was the presence of the enemy. Okay, so. Movement. 
I'm gonna go ahead and fire my cannons at him. We've actually done a reasonable amount of damage that way. This fast shadow, meanwhile, can head south. And find some lovely, delicious ore in very rough ground to mine. There we go. All right. Okay, so we took a little bit of damage there. You can see here our chassis, our armor, and two of our weapons are slightly damaged. Unfortunately, we currently have no infield repair capability, so that's just going to be tough. It's going to be tougher for the Cyber than us, however. Alright, so Cyber destroyed. Good job, Schizoritz. Uh, we took quite a bit of shield damage. Uh, let me see if I can hit him with this thing. Just to weaken his shields, I cannot. Okay, we're gonna try to keep the, uh, keep the enemy under observation. He might run away again. Uh, Scylla cannot catch a specter who runs away, but can kill them. Objective achieved. Okay, so that cyber fucked off. Which, you know, fair play to him. Alright, and let's take a quick lap, find other ore fields, and we'll mine the map out. For what we can, anyway. Making that really, really genuinely distressing mining noise. Hey, more ore fields. Yay, lovely. Lovely jubbly. And there's a third ore field. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to leave the Maxim Extractor specifically off because otherwise it will absorb more at lower efficiency than other ore miners will. But we are going to make some money off this one, tell you what. Because we actually, uh, we actually have mining capacity now. Take a straight run down the side here. Okay, keep running. Got that 30 units. Okay. Perfect. Movement here is keep is easy. You set the wrong guy off to mine. Nah, it's fine. The vertical resolution is wrong. What was it the Maxim Extractor did? The Maxim Extractor holds a lot more ore, but it's only 90% efficient instead of 100% efficient. So it holds more, but you leave some behind. So if you have enough capacity... Or rather, if you don't have enough capacity to uh, mine everything, then having Maxim Extractors is better than not, because you can get, you know, most of it. But if you have enough capacity to mine everything without using Maxim Extractors, that's better. And yeah, we probably will end up opening up the Maxim Extractor at some point here, just to finish stuff off. But yeah, I do wish the uh, the auto mine would kick in.
All right, fast shadows full up. Scylla's working on it. Or 60, what's that? 20 and 20, okay. All right. Uh, the fueler devices are full up over here. Uh, this is probably gonna... I don't think it's quite gonna fill up this fueler device. We'll see. Number of turns on these missions doesn't matter. So you can just let her sit around regenerating energy while you're doing something else. Okay, now, if I was being really manic for efficiency, I would now send this guy over. I can send him down there, I guess. You turn on the Maxim. And go suck up what we've got left in this field. Perfect. Are you gonna even, like, make it down here, Scylla? Yeah, I guess you are. I don't think there are any other fields, but I'll double check just to be safe. And in just a moment, we'll be done. Yeah, I don't think there's any other fields. You can definitely see how big of a difference the terrain makes on your movement, though. It makes a big difference sometimes. All right, there we go, full up. A hero of capitalism, indeed. Is there any other ore over here? Nope. All right, time to go. There, we mined 97% of the ore. We destroyed one of the cybers, and we made almost $60,000. That is why mining missions are what you do, even though the sound is horrible. Uh, and nobody got promoted. Again, Schizer... Oh, Schizerets did get promoted. That's good. Great. I love that for Schizerets. The promotion. Promotion's good. Let's see how his skills increased. Around the 200th... Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Like, around the, the seven or 800th time you hear it. Um, you can see Schizoret's stability went down. That's because he was shot with guns, uh, and he didn't like it. He really, he hated that experience. Uh, and as a result, he needs to be, uh, restabilized. And who else do I need to heal? Oh, I shot you full of drugs and never healed it, didn't I? Yeah, okay, that that's fine. I'll heal that up. Okay. Do biodrums have limbs? Yes, biodrums are, uh, people. Biodrums are people-shaped. They have people limbs. They have limbs like people do. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and buy uh, a second ogre, I think. Purchased. So we'll have a second ogre. Uh, we are going to have to repair Scylla. It'll cost about $500. Uh, with 42,000 credits, we can now afford to splurge. So I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade to the 30 millimeter chains. And what else? Uh, this ogre we should rename to something. Who wants to be an ogre? Give me a name for an ogre. Hey, Herdalas, how's it going? Somebody give me a Herc name. Spit it out. First one wins. Name it Shrek. Uh, I said the first one wins, so here we go. It's Shrek. There we are. It's done. Can't be taken back. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to want to upgrade the battery. We're going to want to upgrade the shield. I'm actually just going to upgrade everything. Since I have the cash to do it, we're going to go ahead and upgrade absolutely everything. Once again, we're going with the SE-1000 lasers. We're going with EMPs for the lower arms for those close-range engagements. we got the 30mm chains. Now, this one, I'm actually going to put on two, um, two single-band ECMs. 
and then we'll put in two uh, Euler devices. Uh, you can have resupply drones, which let you resupply your ammunition, but personally, I've never found ammunition to be a big deal in this game. So I'm not super worried about it. Uh, and let's, yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade your sensor. Why not? It'll, it'll help you feel better about your life. Okay, so with that, I think we don't need the Maxim Extractor anymore. I think we have enough fueler devices to do all our mining. Uh, in fact, I think we're just going to fill this guy up with fueler devices. And the Fast Shadow has two fuelers and some guns. Uh, let's go up to three. So that's plenty of mining capacity. We'll honestly probably be able to mostly mine a map out just with our shadows. And then Scylla and Shrek are kinda here for, uh, yeah, let's actually swap this out for, uh, a new ECM. So they're kinda there for moral support, and especially for military support in the sense of shooting, uh, cybrids in the face when they attempt to interrupt our mining procedures. Good old gore kill ram sauce. <laughs> mech design in this is so weird. It's a creepy battle tech. Uh, a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit creepy. What can I say? Okay. Let's take, uh, well, actually, let's buy a bioderm first. Now, with $11,000 available, uh, I'm looking for high energy and high cannon. So, Katisha is definitely a possibility. Can't afford Nura. Uh, Jean, of course, remains probably the most efficient pick, but we already have one of him, and I don't want to be boring, so we're not going to do that. Uh, so I'm thinking probably Kadisha. There we go. All right. Somebody call dibs on the bioderm. Justin Smith wants to be a bioderm. This is you now, Justin. There you are, in all your glory. Yeah, it used to be you could right-click in the in the CD version, you could right-click on these, and you would actually get a history of, like, the person the Bioderm is based off of, which was really cool, but we can't do that. So we're gonna go piloting, energy, cannon, and advanced tech. Uh, unfortunately, Justin's advanced tech skill is very low, so he's gonna be pretty inaccurate with those EMPs. Uh, Tor Nielsen only has piloting, that's fine. Schizoritz is fine. 101 here in the fast shadow. Let's go ahead and upgrade piloting. And uh, let's go ahead and upgrade energy as well. All right, so Justin, we are going to link you to Shrek. That is your new home. You pilot track. That's what you do. That's your job. Um, these are all quick assault missions, and quick assault missions are actually quite dangerous with our current, our current gang. So the way quick assault works is, um, you're dropped, and you there's no Herc, uh, carrier on the map. You're just in the middle of a bunch of cybrids, and your goal is to kill them all. Uh, if you have a properly built team that's designed for that kind of work. They're not that hard, but if you don't, then you're likely to lose somebody. And in this case, we have a couple of these dedicated, very, very light, very poorly defended mining hercs. So quick assaults are very bad for us. We want to do one more mining mission at least, and then probably, uh, then probably we start taking some fights. Uh, there should be promotion. Yeah, we're not getting promoted yet. Do we get promoted after a quick assault? Yeah, we get promoted after we do a quick assault mission. So let's do one more mining mission, and then we'll go do a quick assault. Yes, you pilot Shrek, Justin. Okay, so Paracelsus, let's go. We're going back to Paracelsus. We're going back to Paracelsus. We're mining more ore. I see ore over here. I 
don't see any cybrids, at least not yet. Scylla, let's put you kind of up here where you can get a little bit of a view. And Shrek, let's get you over this way where you can reinforce if necessary. Okay, so a Spectre shot at Scylla. There he is. The foe. The hated enemy. Both of them. Both of them, actually. Alright, Scylla. There we go. Perfect. Good damage. Good damage. And I actually do have guns on this, this uh, shadow, so... Failure. All right. Well, uh, Shrek, go uh, go start mining. Okay, a little bit of shield damage. Nothing too severe. Detected. And this little bastard is trying to run away from me, and we do not accept that. Perfect. Okay, so we would get the auto mining, but we're just going to do the mining ourselves real quick. Because, once again, we love money. Money is the most important things in our lives. Oh, hey, wow, there's a lot of ore fields on this map. I love it. Go ahead, turn all those on. Time to hear that horrible noise several hundred more times. This is, I'll be honest, the mining noise is, in my mind, literally the worst thing about the game. Um, because in order to play the game well, you have to do it so much. Like, hearing that mining noise becomes an integral part of your being. And I mean, in a way, it's almost a funny sound, but also it's terrible. remove the mining sound file. I don't I don't know how to do that. I'm not look. Look, I'm sorry. I I don't I don't mod. I do not the mods. I'm computer literate but not like computer savvy if that makes sense. Is quite quite even. units. No, that's 20 units. That's 20. That's 20. That's 20. Yeah, these are all 20. Alright, uh, well, I'm gonna waste 10 units of here, but that's okay. Alright, that field, done. 
let's make sure we equalize everybody's shields, which I haven't done, and which could have resulted in disaster, potentially. Because I'm sorry, I was just too focused on the money. I totally lost track of the, uh, the military aspects of my job. Consumed by the, uh, the specter of profit. Uh, it's possible there's a field down there, but I'm not super worried about it. Tried that, it made the game crash as it couldn't find the file. <laughs> I believe that. With these old-style games, I absolutely believe that if you mod it to remove a super annoying sound file, the game will literally refuse to work. They'll just be like, nah, fuck you, buddy. You listen to the mining sound. The robot cow, the, the honk. The honk is unremovable. It's a core part of the Cyberstorm experience. Without the honk, we have nothing. Also, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but sometimes the pathfinding, which is actually pretty smart, the pathfinding will take your Herc along the quickest route to wherever you're trying to get them to go, which sometimes means they dodge ore, because you see, mining ore takes energy, and so if they can find a, a more energy-efficient route to get to the place that you've directed them to move to, then they'll do that instead and they'll just leave the ore there, because they're like, I don't know why you would want that. That takes more energy to, to walk over. That's a terrible space to move to. Is that... Is that ore? That's ore. Okay. On the orange, it's difficult to distinguish the ore. And I think that's pretty much gonna be it possible there's some tiny amount of ore. There is not. Okay. Alright, one more turn. We'll see if there's any ore up here. I doubt it. Nope. Alright, time to go. Back to the Herc base. Boom, 60,000 more dollars, 99%. Never mind, my ears started bleeding. <laughs> Am I the dude you've been watching play through XCOM? Yeah, I, probably. I played through XCOM. You could be uh you could be watching it. For a sick prank make the mining sound vine booms. When you're mining eardrums. <laughs> Perfect. All right, hey, they auto mined eighty dollars worth of ore for us. Thanks, Unitech auto mining teams. I love you. You're my favorite. Perfect. Okay. So now, 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 now. Um, we're gonna keep at least one of these, but we're probably not really going to use them much in the future. Uh, if that makes sense. Entire fleet repaired. What I am gonna do is I am going to buy a Sensei. And the reason I'm buying a Sensei is because Senseis can carry the Scout sensors and they're tough enough to not instantly die. Oh, wait, I can only have four hooks. That's right. God damn it. Are you serious? Are you really... Are you doing this to me right now? Okay, Shadow Ghost. Um... No, I'm gonna keep Shadow Ghost. It's fast Shadow. I'm gonna. Nah, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, Shadow Ghost, sorry. You're going the way of all the Earth. Uh, I'm gonna buy a Sensei. And this is just because when it comes to combat missions, I would much rather have a Sensei. Uh, they're much tougher, they're much safer in the, uh, in the fires of war. 
and they're just generally, uh, just generally superior. We're going to equip this sensei with EMPs, 30mm chains, and it has self-guided missiles, so Missiles SG. Missile SGs do more damage than Missile SPs, and they're also more accurate, so that's really nice. We could also give them the Missile MYs, which are an area of effect saturation rocket, but they're not very good, so I don't really like them. We're going to replace this Bertrand with a Fueler Extractor. We're going to put in at least two single-band ECMs. And in the fourth slot, uh, we'll leave the fourth slot empty for right now. Alright, give me a name for the Sensei. Mr. Miyagi returns. Call it Weeb? Okay, we'll call it Weeb. There we go. Good old Weeb. Our eyes and ears. Now, so Tor Nielsen is now unlinked. Uh, we're gonna put Tor in Weeb. We need to upgrade a whole bunch of skills on him. He's decent. He's not bad. Rank A2. Schizoritz is rank A5 and is shaping up quite nicely, to be totally honest. And Bottle 101 is rank 5, A5. Still sucks, but, you know, rank A5. Something to be said for that. Also, I don't know why Model 101 is, like, losing health and stability. That's very... I'm not sure why that's happening. Must be drug use. Okay, so, Tor, you go in. There we are. And now, now we're gonna do the funny thing. We're going to take a quick assault mission. So, the mining missions, we're not getting promoted for them. We're making money, but we're not getting promoted. Which means it's time to take a quick assault mission. Remember, the goal of a quick assault is they drop you in the middle of a pile of cybrids and you have to kill all the cybrids before you are yourself murdered. Uh, yeah, let's take the one month mission on Parsis. That's fun. Well, we've been on Parsis a lot, actually. Let's go to Tirith. Tirith's more fun. Let's see a new tile set. Let's go to Tirith. Remember, Tirith is very low gravity, so people can move very far. Little or no atmosphere. And, uh, BGMs age faster, but you know what? Fuck it. It'll be fine. Let's go! Can't I just upgrade the chassis instead of selling the mech wholesale? No, you cannot. Mechs are of different types, and they do not overlap. You cannot upgrade one to the other. You have to sell the Herc and then buy a new one in a new type. Okay, so, uh, oh my god, that's a lot of Cybrids. That's more Cybrids than I anticipated. I mean, fortunately, they're all bad, but... Okay, so here's the goal. What we want to do is we want to clear out all the cybrids who can attack us without us having cover from them, which means basically these four, ideally, or probably possibly these three, maybe that one. We'll see what we can do. But importantly here... Yeah. We need to break shields as efficiently as possible. Okay, so we've broken that shield. Then we need to get the fast shadow down here. 68%, yikes. Okay, that's good. We're gonna put fast shadow down like that. Uh, doesn't need a lot of damage to kill that thing at this point. Oh, come on. Weeb. God damn it. Uh, you fired, yeah, you fired all your guns. Okay, so we've broken his shield. That's good. Take him out with missiles. What do you still have available? You still got a chain, but your chance to hit is minuscule. Yeah, go ahead and crouch. That's fine. Crouching lowers your accuracy, by the way. Okay. 
Well done, team. I don't think anyone's going to die. Can't tell your guys apart from theirs? Uh, you should be able to. They're pretty distinctive, to be honest. The Herks are generally bright white and tend to be larger. The Cybers are these, like, kind of low-down, scuttly, black-and-white things. Okay, so we, that was pretty effective. We returned some decent fire. Uh-oh. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it! Oh, no. Okay. Well, Shrek's shields were taken down, but he lived. Oof. Okay, Shrek took some pretty bad damage there. Um, chassis down to 35%. That's real bad. Lost two weapons. That's not great. That'll be a hefty repair bell. But I think we can still do this. So we've got three enemies remaining. Because we've still got both of our 30 millimeter chains and we've still got missile support from our other Hercs. Okay. Still one somewhere, isn't there? Is he up here? Yeah, he's up here. Okay. Almost dead, but not quite. Uh, Hail Mary! Oh man, we missed. That's a shame. Okay, we're fine. A little bit more of a scuffing than I would have liked on this mission. Are the enemies in this game also people? Uh, no, yeah, so you can see that, uh, uh, poor Justin is suffering from, uh, severe stability damage on account of their Herc being just absolutely shot to shit. Okay, there we go. Cyber forces were caught by total surprise and destroyed. Um, but guess what? There's some of our favorite material here for systems. Turn on the extractor, Sunny Jim. It's ore mining time. Uh, this is a low ore mission, so there might only be one field. You just stay down there and think about what's happened to you and what you've done. Systems. And of course, the ore field is in the roughest terrain available, so it will be as slow as possible. But, you know, that's just life. Oh no, there's a second ore field. Perfect. Love it. We'll have a couple minutes of honking here, and then we will go home with our money and our pride. And we'll, uh, we'll dip Justin in the back to tanks. See anything down here? Any ore? Any money? Go scout for money. But you can definitely see how this is like a little bit faster on this planet just because the gravity is lower. You can move faster, except when you're over here in the fucking rocks where it takes you a year and a half to do anything. Oh, hey, more ore. Lovely jubbly. Alright, 
Yep. Money, 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 money. Money is especially useful right now because after this mission, we are about to be promoted for our successes, our victories, our incredible feats of daring do, and more importantly, the fact that we're showing a positive ROI on the Unitech balance sheet. Because of the way we religiously vacuum up any unit of ore that dares to exist in our vicinity. You know, shooting cybrids, secondary. Very secondary. It's all about the ore money. On some combat missions, they don't auto-mine for you. Is there a chance of randomly exploding if you are badly damaged? Randomly? No. Suddenly? Yes. So, as I mentioned, there are certain components in Herx that, if destroyed, instantly destroy the Herc. So, if your reactor is destroyed, the Herc's dead. If your life support is destroyed, the Herc is disabled, can be salvaged, but the Biodrome is dead. Um, if the chassis is destroyed, of course, the Herc is dead. Uh, I think the battery being destroyed does not necessarily destroy the Herc, but generally, if your battery is destroyed, your chassis has taken so much damage that the Herc is actually destroyed. Um, but yeah, reactor and life support, I know for a fact. If either of those go, the Herc's done for the mission, at least. Alright. Grab that. Take a quick little scouting run. Grab some of those there. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Finish up our scouting run real quick. Make sure there isn't some more delicious money sitting somewhere. Doesn't look like it. Time to go. Okay, so, $47,000, and we have been promoted to the rank of Unit Captain. Uh, yeah, Shrek was down to 29%, unfortunately. But, uh, Fast Shadow got away with 84%. That's nice. All right, Unit Captain. At last, nanotechnology is here. Limited repairs on the battlefield are now, now possible with the Nano Enhanced Repair Pod. Each pod contains millions of micro-robots that, when directed at a damaged component, permanently assume the form and function of the device. You can access its power through the Herc status screen. Uh, also, you may notice the number of people here is smaller than it used to be. This, this line used to start about here and go out to about here. It is in Smallening. A few of you people still don't get the whole picture, so I'm going to paint you a new one. Unitech owns you the way they own that Herc or that derm over there. When a model is unprofitable, it's discontinued. You'll notice a few more holes in our ranks today. The lucky ones died with their units planet side. The others were discontinued. I hope I'm making myself clear. As unit captains, you now command up to six Hercs and six derms. Some of you will be receiving special bioderm assignments. I remind you that these biodermes count as part of your allotment and cannot be replaced. Okay, new bioderm assignment. A controversy surrounds the destruction of the Moss Orsini Herc base in the Paracelsus system. While Unitech officials claim that a cybrid task force was responsible, survivors claim that it was a renegade bioderm. Initial test results show that radiation traces are not cybrid in origin. And, of course, there is a transcript from the Bioderm Control Agency emergency meeting. Look at the possibilities these Bioderm represents. We've never seen these traits. It destroyed an entire base single-handedly to avoid the Biovat. It killed thousands of those losses were acceptable and insured. So, we have been assigned a new Bioderm. And this Bioderm is Tarsus. If you don't recognize the name Tarsus, Herc Commander Tarsus was one of the people quoted back at the beginning of the game, talking about the Bioderm program and how they make Bioderms out of the genetic material of uh, people, and he thinks it's weird and creepy. Well, 
here he is. This is the Bioderm made from Hurt Commander Tarsus. Uh, he destroyed an entire base to avoid being recycled, and he starts with a cannon skill of 99, the highest possible value. He also has very high missile skills. He's pretty mediocre elsewhere, but his piloting is very good. And of course, his cannon skill is actually impossible to beat. So, he's the best giant pilot in the game. Imagine losing things critical to Herc function would destroy it. Yes, exactly. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to upgrade his advanced tech as well, because that's a surprise tool that will help us later. And let's go back to the Herc Bay, because we have some new technology available. Um, no new Hercs, per se, but we do have new tech and new items and weapons. So the first thing we have to do is repairs. Shrek, as you can see, is beat to hell. You can prepare things, like, manually, one point at a time over here, or you can just click Repair All. It will take $7,600 to repair everything. Let's go ahead and do that now. We now have access to the c lasers, the compression lasers. Um, the compression lasers are just better. So the SE-1000, you can see, does 120 damage versus shields, 24 versus armor. The c lasers does 120 versus shields and 48 versus armor. So it's a strict upgrade. We're going to go ahead and make that upgrade. It's not too expensive. Um, we could replace EMPs with SC400s, but I don't think that's very valuable. 30mm chain is still the uh, the top in its uh, in its field. But we can now buy Proto Nanite Repair. Proto Nanite Repair is incredibly expensive, but it gives us 150 points that we can spend to repair things in the field. So, you know, if you're reactor has been knocked down to 60%, you can spend 40% out of your proto nanite repair and bring it back up to 100%. So it lets you keep going in situations where otherwise you might be fucked. So if we're going to install proto nanite repair on both of our ogres. We're also going to go with the SC-1000s. Uh, can't upgrade the drive or the reactor yet, but we can upgrade our... Uh, I guess we don't have any of those upgrades, but we can actually upgrade our shields to 1500, and I will do so. It's going to make our Hercs a little bit heavier, but, and a little bit slower, but the extra, uh, the extra durability is worth it. Shrek, come here. Upgrade your shield, thank you. Okay, uh, Weeb, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and give Weeb Proto Nanite Repair as well. Well, not yet, I don't have to worry about it just yet. Okay, so, we got a few little upgrades there. That is a bad case of the shingles. <laughs> That's, I think it's more of a bad case of the missing face. Uh, the EMP is max range of 5, damage of shields 150. I might actually swap him out for the SC400s, because they have longer, a little bit longer range. Um... Nah, not worried about it. Uh, you can't upgrade now to micro missiles. So micro missiles fire three times. They do less damage. They do more damage overall if all three hit, but they also uh, only have eight effective rounds versus the ten of the self-guided missile, and they don't have the accuracy bumps. So I'm not super worried about that. However, I can now buy more Hercs and Biodrums. We're gonna go ahead and buy a giant. Purchased. Because we have Tarsus. I'm not going to rename Tarsus. Tarsus is actually like a like a plot guy. Uh, we're going to give it a flexive drive. We're going to give it a shield 1950, the highest level of shield you can have. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to grab a 1500 and L205 and an improved life support. So the thing about giants is, uh, you know how the ogres have almost all um, energy weapons? Giants have almost all ballistic weapons. So all their gun slots go to cannons. Uh, there's only a few exceptions. So that you can have the 120mm autocannon, which does 90 damage per shot at pretty long range. You can also equip them with the Blast Mortar. The Blast Mortar doesn't do a ton of damage, but it's an AoE weapon, so it does damage to an area 3 hexes in diameter. It's indirect fire. 
Uh, it's technically an energy weapon, not a cannon, but it's really worth having on the, uh, on the giant anyway. So we're going to put blast mortars in the top slots here. And then in the side slots, uh, there's a lot of options. So you have the rangers, which have a max range of 30. They do not do much damage, but they can fire at very, very long range, which is kind of cool. You have the EF cannons, which have short range, but do damage to both shields and armor, which is kind of cool. Uh, the 120mm autocannons is really what you want on this guy, because it does the most damage. But, uh, first I want to upgrade all of the slots, so all of the slots do reasonable damage. So we're going to go ahead and fill all four lower slots with 50mm autocannons. And we don't really need to worry too much about resupply drones, so I'm just going to give him a couple of single band ECMs. And there we go. Uh, give me a name for this Herc, please. Name for the giant. Tarsus can drive me, I'll be the giant. Uh, well, that's weird. Name it Nigerian Dwarf. I, no, I'm not going to name it Nigerian Dwarf. Goliath, that's a classic. Goliath is a classic. Okay, we'll call it Goliath. Why not? Goliath is a nice... A nice standardish name for a giant to have. Comes from mythology. It's biblical. Svalbard? Uh, that would have been a pretty good one as well. Also, this uh, over here, in case you didn't notice, this shows you all of your career stats. So it's been nine months in the career. That's how many creds we currently have, the number of Herx and Biodromes we own compared to our maximum, number of Cybers we've destroyed, missions completed, and how much ore we've mined, which is, of course, the most important stat. So let's go ahead and actually, let's train Tarsus in energy real quick so those blast mortars work. There we go. And we will link Tarsus to the line. Perfect. Alright. Uh, still lots of quick assault missions on the agenda, if we wanted to do them. We do have those higher level shields, so I'm, I'm less worried about them, to be honest. Uh, everything. A lot of missions on Tirith. One mission on Mardala. We haven't gone to Mardala yet, so let's go to Mardala. Mardala is a lovely, a lovely sort of blood-like planet. 50% gravity, poisonous atmosphere, normal electromagnetic field, or covers about 5% of the map, and they'll pay me a 25, 2100 credit bonus. 21,000 credit bonus, sorry. Let's go! And we landed in the middle of an ore field. Perfect. So we're gonna start corking that ore down immediately. Meanwhile, good old weeb here. So, these boulders have a defense bonus. This is a, if I recall correctly, this is a straight percentage chance to miss you. It just increases the enemy's chance to not hit you. Let's kind of move our shields over that way a little bit. Another big, nice ore field up that way. A uh, Shrek... Take up a defensive position behind this boulder. Scylla. Go over there. And Goliath. Take some high ground. Okay. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Alright. Well, wow. Yeah, so that's a parasite. Um, god, did, wasn't quite expecting that. Uh, fortunately, Fast Shadow lived, albeit battery almost destroyed, and chassis also almost destroyed. Uh, so, uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, parasites are very heavily armed. This is a Parasite V1, so again, it's, it's still not, like, it's not armed with very sophisticated weapons. Oh god, I forgot to heal Justin. Oh, I'm a failure. I'm bad at my job. Okay, yeah, so, so... Justin's not doing well. 
Also, Justin can't hit shit. See if we can get him with the, uh... There we go. Perfect. Alright! That's a cyber eliminated. This game just seems like a cool UFO defense. Uh, I mean, UFO defense is cool, but, uh, yes, I forgot to, uh... I forgot to heal the biodrums. Shut up. It's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it, it's fine. One of my fueler devices is damaged. I actually forget what that does. In terms of its, like, ore carrying ability. But I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure there'll be no problems from here on out. Because we've killed the parasite, that's all that matters. Also, God, this is just the worst terrain. Oh, here we go. Grab us some of that delicious, sweet, sexy ore. See anything over here? Is there any more ore? No? Right, you go down south. Excellent. Ah, there is some more delicious, sexy ore. Perfect. Also, really kind of a shame that immediately after I got the uh, Proto Nanite Repair, one of my hurts that was not given Proto Nanite Repair was immediately just absolutely shot to shit. Really kind of a shame. Seems like the ore extractor is working fine despite having a yellow status, so that's good. Also, can I say I love the hop animations when your Turks have to jump over uh, things that are too tall for them to just step over? They make the little whoop hopping now noise, it's great. There's so many things I love about this game. And then I mine ore and I go, hmm, yeah, that's right. The honking. I remember that. Alright, you turn all that off. Yeah, just walk around down here trying to show off more terrain. Or find more terrain, rather. Giant, yep, you help. We got that. You can go up there to work on that field. Yep, yeah, right up there. There we go. Perfect. Like it, love it, gotta have it. Uh, 
Alrighty. If you notice, the non-scout scanners can't see over ridges and stuff. Correct. So there's a stat on scanners, which is called Ability to Sense Over Obstacles. The scout sensors have it on, like, great or perfect, and the regular non-scout scanners tend to have poor, or at higher levels, they have, like, medium. Something like that. So yes, scout sensors are invaluable for controlling indirect fire. In addition to just seeing like twice as far. Okay, so you're full up. You're not full up, but struggling with energy. I think I'm just gonna finish up this little field and then go. There we are. Um, yeah, that could give me another thousand, another thousand points, but it'll take several turns. I'm just gonna leave. Bye. Thanks, guys. All right, 62 grand. Cool. Let's go actually heal our biodermes, shall we? All right, Sestrar. Good night. I'll drop half the ore instead of pick it up. Turn on cheat codes when you've cleared a map. I don't even know how to do that in this game, actually. I've never done it. All right, heal everybody up. Let's go repair our Herks. And I lose a percentage if I don't... Yeah, yeah, the auto mine only gives you, I think, half of it. This game seems like kill aliens, and instead of save the planet, it's mine the ore. Uh, yeah, it is. No, this, this is not about saving the planet, dude. This is about making money. Repair. This is about making money for A, the corporation, and B, yourself. Alright. Let's get a couple of 120mm auto cannons. Let's get a couple of 30mm chains up there. We got two ECMs. We're gonna get a nano repair. Uh, we're never gonna use the giant for mining, so we're gonna load him up with ECMs and then a repair. And we're also going to reinforce his legs so he can't be crippled by leg shots. Let's give him a better battery, and we're going to go all the way up to the 1950 shield. So Goliath is now very hard to kill, which is, of course, the goal. Uh, Shrek and Scylla cannot carry a shield that heavy, but I can reinforce their legs for a fairly trivial cost and speed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just like that. And then I'm allowed to own one more Herc at present. Check out our Cyberstorm documentation. Look for a file called Cheat. Eh. Like to make an argument for micro missiles. I think the reliability is worth reliability is worth more on what's seemingly used as a finisher weapon anyway. Uh yeah, pretty much. I mean, so missiles are basically there's what missiles are is missiles are cannons with longer range. That's essentially the way this goes. Um, we're going to go for a third ogre, because right now ogres are our baseline combat herc. And of course, we are going to need a name for this ogre. So people suggest a name for me while I'm kitting it out. Uh, we're going to kit this one out in pretty much the same way as the, way, same ways as the previous two. Uh, right now, there aren't enough weapons available for there to be a ton of diversity in how you arm these guys. They're all pretty much gonna be the same kind of thing. Now we get your sea lasers in there, and then you're out of money, but then you're gonna go on and get the EMPs. I, I could give him the SC-400 so he has a little bit more range capability. That's fine. That'd be fine. Uh, 
Uh, you only need Blast Mortars for the HQ battle. I actually think Blast Mortars are quite useful all the time, pretty much. Heterocephalus, Tim, Vidar, Big Chungus, The Drip, Donkey, The Rabbit, Jim. <laughs> Ogre Battle 64. Okay, I like Ogre Battle 64. That's what we're going to call that one. We don't have a Biodome for Ogre Battle 64 just yet. Um, although what we could do, and what I think I might do, is I might sell fast Shadow. Because we're getting to the point where Shadows are just too vulnerable. Um, there's, you know, taking them into any kind of real fighting risks them being instantly destroyed. So actually, I guess what I could do is I've got Scylla and Shrek. Uh, Fast Shadow is providing a lot of my mining capacity, so I don't want to sell it. But... I could take Model 101 off Fast Shadow and link it. Linking Model 101 to an Ogre would be a terrible idea. It's such a shitty Bioderm. And no amount of training will fix that. Yeah, never mind. Cancel. Scratch that. I'm not gonna do that. Model 101's just too bad. Just, just not good enough to be worthwhile. So we're gonna leave Ogre Battle 64 unlinked right now. And we're gonna grab another Quick Assault mission, I think. Uh, let's grab a Quick Assault on Parsis. Only one month. And yeah, let's just dive right into it, shall we? We've got a couple of Ogres, we've got a Giant. Let's do this thing. Okay, how are we set up? So, we have... Uh, it's once again all Spectres. Okay, we did get shot a little bit, but that's fine. EMP him. And we can kill him with cannons. Perfect. Okay. Now. Hit him with an EMP. Perfect. EMP. Shifting one hex did not quite do it. That's a shame. Hit him with our blast mortar. Death. Good. Ow. Pain, suffering. The badness. Uh, and he turned. That's a shame. Okay, trading shots there. Let's go ahead and hit him with our missiles. Great. Alright, so we're out of guns on the giant. That's fine. Shield set up there. This fast shadow is crippled. Crouch. Crouch. Alright, Shrek still has some guns. Uh, what is happening here? Did my battle animation speed change? Okay, well, we did some damage with our cannons there. Alright, so there's only two of them left, I think. Not bad. Alright, so, we've got our nanite repair, so we can go through and just boop, 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 and boop. We can't repair armor, unfortunately, with the nano repair. That isn't an option. Hello, friend. Wanna die for me? Thank you. And there we go. Cybered Force is destroyed. And we're just going to end that mission. We don't need to mine all the ore. It'll be auto-mined. It'll be okay. Wish Remora didn't fall off at the first one or two missions. They're cute. Yeah, they are. It's true. 
you did work, Justin. It went out well. Okay, so we only got 30 grand for that, but it was a quick mission. We destroyed all the cybrids. You know, I'll take it. Uh, the ore got auto-mined for us, so we lost a significant chunk of the value of that, but that's okay. Oh, fucking fast shadow. I forgot that your perks got shot when they tried to move. That was uh, a change between uh, between the two different versions of the game that I played. So between the uh, the CD version did not have that feature. You could move, but only firing at other cybrids uh, drew reaction fire. Uh, but in the the upgraded version, as it were, that Gog sells, uh, just moving draws reaction fire if they have it available. All right, get a couple of 30 millimeter chains. So the other thing that you can do, and this is kind of fun, is you can actually save hurt configurations. So I can just save this. It saves it as a hurt configuration file to like, you know, your actual documents. Uh, and then you can just copy it and you can actually buy it at full price. So this is the Scylla, for example. So if I save the Scylla, then I can go over, hold on. Then I can go to Purchase, and I can load a Hurt Configuration, and I can load Scylla. And there it is. That's a Scylla. It has all the, the items that you gave it originally, and it shows you what the full price for this configuration is, which in this case is 56,000 credits, 56,518 credits, which is kind of cool. Save you a little bit of time, and you know what you have to uh, save up for. And you can save those changes, and so now the Scylla will just be there every time I load up this save file and open the Herc menu. Uh, for Ogre Battle 64, however, I think Ogre Battle 64 is more or less ready to go into combat. Uh, I can't upgrade the battery, can I? No, I cannot. Okay, uh, I do want... I've got 16,000 credits. I do want a couple of single band ECM. Oh, I need a, I need a nano repair. Eh, I'm going to skip the nano repair for right now. I'm just going to go a couple of single band ECMs. And we're going to go heal our biodrums and buy a new one. No. Oh. Fuck me. Uh, I can't... I literally just clicked the wrong thing. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna buy uh, we're gonna buy a couple of new uh, bioderms. Yeah, that's it. We're gonna go uh, replace fucking Tarsus that we just accidentally recycled. No, no, I I recycled. I instead of heal all, I clicked the button directly below heal all, which is recycle. And I recycled Tarsus. Because this is a mid-90s game, and there's no confirmation for stuff like that. So you can just recycle people, which I did. Uh, so we're got well, but you know what? That means, that means that we have a, that means we have room for somebody else to join our little gang. So it's all good. Uh, I am going to replace Tarsus with Borok is an obvious one. Uh, who else has good cannon? Borok's pretty much the only one. Ironically, Model 110 has one of the better cannon scores. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's just get a, let's get a Borok. And then let's get, we have 23,000. And we're getting a giant. So once again, we want energy, cannon, and advanced tech. Um... Let me see what I'm going to do with that. Can't hire, can't afford Andra. Uh, I could splurge on a crow here. Crow's a good body. Yeah, I'm going to splurge on a crow. Alright, so I need two names for bioderms. Two people volunteer to be bioderms. You'd think there would be a confirm button? Yeah, you'd think that, but there isn't. All right, Garsamore and the Offensive Lemon are our new, uh, our new 
Biodurbs. So we've got Garsamore, Garsamore, and we've got V Offensive. I cannot put V Offensive Limit in. Offensive Limit. A fence limo. No, wait. The off lemon. There we go. Good old off lemon. Our favorite guy. Alright. Fantastic. I love it. Need someone who will perform well to replace Tarsus. It's what Tarsus would have wanted. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this game is from before autosave. It is. It is indeed. Oh, yes, Off Lemon. That's who he is. All right. So Garsamore goes in Ogre Battle 64, and Off Lemon goes in Goliath. I mean, that really is quite respectable. 86 piloting, 80 cannon. Uh, energy could use some work. Those blast mortars, not gonna be the greatest weapons in the hands of Off Lemon, but you know, it'll be okay, probably. It'll probably be fine. Ooh, we have a defend installation mission. That's actually kind of cool. Okay, let's do this just because I haven't shown you one of these before. Um, it says intelligence reports a very low cyber presence, so this probably isn't going to be a big deal. Um, but basically, you have to defend an installation. Uh, it says defend our installation for 12 turns. Realistically, this means kill all the cybrids, because the cybrids will attack immediately, and it will take uh, far less than 12 turns for that to happen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this game. We're going to save it under the name YouTube, and let's launch the mission. So, defend our installation on Dural for 12 turns. As you can see, we have buildings. Uh, these buildings are, they're, they're targetable. You can, we can't target them, but cybrids can. And we just have to prevent the cybrids from destroying them. We've got a parasite over there. We've got a parasite over there. Honestly, that's probably all the cybrids there are. Wouldn't be surprised. And we're just gonna kind of line our line our bros up real quick. We're gonna put Weave down over here, where he'll be hard to shoot. We're gonna put you way down over here. Systems. And you're not gonna be shootable from that direction directly, so we're gonna put your his shields pointing this way in case like some horrible cybrid comes over the ridge wanting to eat his giblets. And then Goliath is going to be right there. And we're just going to lob some shots over for fun. Yeah, there we go. We did some damage. Okay. So we've got an Arachnus and a Parasite on this side. We've got a Parasite on that side. We can hop right up here with Ogre Battle. and get a decent shot on him. Hmm, only one cannon hit. Unfortunate. Okay, a little bit of damage there. A little bit of the old... A little bit of damage, uh... Calculated. Uh, I lost chance to hit by jumping down. Height advantage often gives you a bonus to hit, so by jumping down, I actually lost that there. I mean, can I get all the way up? I cannot. I can get up there, though. And weeb. The snow is very, very hard to move on. Or the ice, rather. Okay. Oh, he took a shot at the back of Goliath. Interesting. 
and our first genocide. So genocides are the largest cybrid we've seen to date. The largest and also the scariest. Uh, yeah, let me send some laser shots that way. Scylla, please finish off this guy. Thank you. And let's get Ogre Battle 64 heading in that direction. And let's also get Goliath heading in that direction. And let's see if we can't Blast Mortar these two while they're next to each other. We can, nice. That's why Blast Mortars are really useful, because they do a lot of damage. They can do damage spread out among multiple shields, which is quite handy. Meantime, suck down some money real quick. Okay. Oh, so he's got some heavy lasers. The, uh, the Arachnus is armed with light lasers, but the Parasite has heavy lasers, and I think so does the Malignus. All right, I've got an angle on the Arachnus. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Good damage. Perfect. Two good blast mortar hits. Love that. We're going to crouch. You can always crouch even if you're out of reactor. If you're working on battery power, you can still crouch, which is great. Constant saving is how to avoid these mistakes. I mean, you're right, but also, uh, I didn't, so, you know. C'est la vie, c'est la guerre. Okay. They're not shooting at me, interestingly. If I was in his position, I would have I would have taken a shot just then. We've got decent accuracy with the compression lasers, actually. Yeah, let me put a couple of compression laser shots into him. Get Weeb up here. Uh, hmm, double blast mortar miss. That wasn't great. Okay, this malignus is still, uh, still just hanging out down there, huh? Not fighting too hard. Okay, and here is the big flank. Perfect. Got him. Should be able to wipe out that genocide without too much trouble and be in the clear. He says, blithe and optimistic. Oh, okay, yeah, it's not. It's just got basic lasers. Stand up. Perfect. All right, base on Dural has been saved. Many Unitech workers owe you their lives. I'm just gonna finish eating this uh, little ore patch and then I will end the mission.
All right, there we go. Good job, team. And we've been promoted again. So we got decent ore, decent auto mine, good bonus, good cyber bounty, altogether almost 30 grand, and we've been promoted to the rank of squad leader. No real damage. Nobody took any uh, any scuffing in that one. Kind of cocky, bringing up bringing a mining mech and using it to mine using a base defense. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, the biggest tech advance this time around is guaranteed to be the least popular with the derms. There are auto destruct devices available for each herc that damage up to a four hex radius from the exploding herc. Don't blow up my herc bay. And here's Base Commander Burl again. It's just as well that some of your comrades didn't make it this far, lest to screw up. The promotion to squad leader is the one that every base commander fears. It's the first time you people can do some real damage to yourselves. The demon herc isn't a bigger ogre. It's another class of herc. Pay attention to the briefing, because if anyone mismanages one of these things, the least that'll happen is that I'll go ballistic on you. Literally. Once again, some of you will be receiving special bioderm assignments. I would encourage you to use them wisely. You'll also notice that you are now allowed to command more biodermes than Hercs. You are encouraged to vary your pilots and rotate your link assignments as you encounter different battle situations. Okay. It's no wonder the newbies don't get this model. It acts alone very well without escort. It's a one-man slaughterhouse is what it is. The demon was created with the ogre's design in mind. Missile pods replaced cannons. The quadruple energy attack was kept but equipped with larger weapons, and a larger chassis was needed to support them. The result, though slower than the ogre, possesses even greater potential to fulfill its design objective, to be able to punch through the enemy's shields and deliver massive damage. And we have now been assigned Quabble! Project Codename Quabble increases the potential of the proto-human bioderm model with more efficient GCSI use. A new substance called Plasmatter, combined with protoplasm, provides enough of a base genetic matrix to use a mix of donor gene information. Though somewhat unstable, the promise of higher skill ratings and a higher learning curve may help us to create the perfect bioderm. Indeed, it does entitle me to command more herks and bioderms. So... We can now buy the demon. We don't have enough money to buy the demon, but we can now buy the demon. There's also several other potential variants that they show us. So, like, instead of buying the stock ogre, you can buy the pagan, which is uh, pretty much the same thing, but slightly improved in some ways. There's no reason to ever buy these, in my experience. So, like, these configurations... They're not fully upgraded, they just have kind of mediocre weapons on them. They're cheaper than a fully upgraded Herc would be, but, you know, if money is your limit, you just go do some more mining missions and then you come back with enough money to buy what you want. So this is the Demon. The Demon has even heavier armor, it's even slower, um, it can carry a much heavier shield. The Demon can carry shields up to 2400, so very, very powerful, can concentrate like seven or eight hundred points on a single shield facing. It carries four large laser weapons, so the ogre had two large and two small. Uh, the demon can carry four large. They are a little bit more limited. They can't carry some of those weapons that the ogre can carry, but also the ogre can't carry some weapons they can. And then has two missile launchers instead of two cannon slots, which means it can do damage at greater range past shields. Demons will rapidly become the standard for mainline combat hercs. So, for example, like, I'm kind of tempted to just sell Ogre Battle 64 right now and buy an Ogre. I'm sorry, buy a Demon. And in fact, I think I will. I'll keep Scylla and I'll keep Shrek for the moment, but I think I'm going to buy a, uh, a Demon pretty quick. Uh, in terms of what other upgrades are available, there is a new targeting computer upgrade. There is a uh, two more levels of life support upgrade, and there are some more weapons. There's an automatic elf, which fires multiple times. Uh, as I said, they do very little damage, but they penetrate shields completely. There is a plasma cannon. Plasma cannon has quite short range and costs a lot of energy to fire, but it does a lot of damage both to shields and to armor. For reference, the compression laser, which is currently our heaviest long-range anti-shield weapon, does 120 damage versus shields, and the plasma cannon 
does 150 plus 75 damage versus armor. So it is a very, very heavy weapon. I never used self-destruct. Ah, uh, pretty much. Uh, I've used self-destruct occasionally. Can biodrums only get hurt if the mech does? You can also drug them. That hurts them. So I'm going to go ahead and sell Ogre Battle 64. And I'm going to buy a demon. And let's go pop in and give that demon some upgrades. Uh, so we can get the Proto Nanite Repair. It's actually a little bit cheaper now than it was. It was 15,000, now it's 12,000. This is consistent throughout the game. Old tech has a cheaper, uh, is cheaper. The Zero Signal Dampener is an upgrade to the single band ECM, reduces opponent's chance to hit by more. There is also, of course, the Self Detonator. Um, the lasers are fine for right now, but I'm going to change these missiles out. Instead of the Missile MY, we're going to the Missile SP2, which does 100 damage when it lands. So we're going Missile SP2. We're also upgrading the drive to Flexer, because that is a free speed increase. And as I said, you can have 2400 shields. Uh, we might not go quite that far. Let's go up to 1950 shield right now. And then we're going max targeting computer, max life support, sensors already maxed out. And I only have 4,400. I think we're calling this one Doom based on everybody's reaction. Doom. <laughs> uh, we're going to upgrade the battery. And, yeah, I mean, actually, we could replace the SE-100s with plasma cannons, I suppose. But I don't think that's necessarily worthwhile. It requires the plasma skill, which nobody really has as of yet, because we haven't been focusing on it. And they are short-range. Now, a little bit later in the game, I do think that the there's an upgraded version of this weapon that I think is very, very useful on demons specifically. But I don't think we need it right now. Um, I can upgrade these to the sea lays, so they'll do a little bit more damage past shields. So we'll just have quad 1,000 sea lasers. We have a couple of good missiles. And instead of the resupply drone, we're going to go zero signal dampener. And then we're never going to use this guy to extract ore, so that's fine. So we'll just leave him like that. So that's Doom. He only has a speed rating of 88. He's a slow boy. He's, he's very chunky. He's thick, he's heavy, he waddles when he walks, he lays down a lot of long-range firepower. And we're gonna link him up real quick. So we've just been given Quabble. Uh, Quabble has only 60 points in every skill and starts at rank B5. However, the interesting thing about Quabble is... Um, his training costs are quite low, and he learns quickly all of his skills. So, like, upgrading him, hitting the upgrade button once gives him seven more points in something. So we will use Quabble. Quabble is actually quite good. Um, we're gonna give him piloting, and then probably energy and missile. And we're not gonna link him just yet, because we don't need to. We have a, a better bioderm available. Specifically, that's Garsamore. Garsamore has, uh, yeah, slightly better stats, much better piloting. So Garsamore is going in, and we don't have enough money to to heal people. Who is who's suffering here? Model 101 is disintegrating slowly. Uh, I'm actually gonna recycle Model 101 now. Just get rid of her. Uh, that will let me heal everybody, and then I can link Quabble to something if I want. You said you can drug them. Does that boost stats at the cost of messing with them? Yes. So, in combat, you can press the shoot this bioderm full of combat stims button, and it increases toxins and lowers stability, but it boosts their stats when you do that. Uh, so yeah, I could link Quabble to Fast Shadow, I suppose. But that seems dangerous. Um. Yeah. I think if I was going to link anyone to, to Fast Shadow, it would actually be Tor Nielsen. 
let's link Tor to Fast Shadow. And then we'll put Quabble in the There we go. That's fine. Sorry, I've been I've been distracted by a message. Somebody sent me. Hold on. Okay. Hold. Oh, cool. Here we are. Great. Still bummed about the unceremonious death of Tarsus Rip. Yeah, I know, man. Me too. Demoted to the mining bot. All right. Uh, let's actually go on a quick mining mission before we do any more military. Uh, because we're poor and we need money. Let's go to Mardala again. Yeah, 26,000 credit bounty for mining 500 units of ore. I will take it. Let's go. Alright, here we are. So, here's how this goes. Um, Doom is, like, virtually immobile. Right? I mean, he can move around a little bit in good terrain. In bad terrain, he's like, eh. It costs a hundred points for him to walk on jagged ground. A hundred points. So, um, he basically doesn't do that. He just sort of stands around, looks menacing, and if necessary, he can provide support fire at long range. Why? What is happening? I'm accidentally increasing my animation speed or something. Okay, there we go. So, Everybody else is going to go out looking around for mining opportunities, as per usual. God, I love how ogres wiggle from side to side. It's hilarious. There is actually quite a bit of ore over on this side, so that's where we're, gonna, we're all going to go. And then uh, if there are any cybers on the other side, they can just be there. That's fine. Okay, found the cybrids. Hello, friends. Would you like to play a game? A game called... Fuck you. That's right. My favorite game. Boom. Got him. All right, there are apparently still others on the map, though, so that's worth knowing. Systems. All right, good. Uh, so, uh, Systems. you've got two fueler devices, right? Okay, you come down that way. Would he have had dialogue or something? No, he never has dialogue, unfortunately. Alright, Lemon, take it easy. Yeah, I must be pushing a hotkey by accident every time my brain shorts out and I try to use WASD controls. One of those must be animation. Maybe it's A. Oh, here they go. That's another parasite. Okay. Hit him with the cannon, Borok. Come on, Lemon. There we go. Okay, cyber threat eliminated. Perfect. Time for ore. Money, 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 money
Yeah, as the game goes on, you end up needing a lot of money to, uh, to keep up with the Joneses, as it were. Fully upgraded Hercs? Expensive. Expensivo. For reference, by the end of the game, you're fielding the Juggernauts, which are the largest, heaviest, and most expensive class of Herc. And those big lads cost well upwards of 250 grand to cut it, to kit out. In fact, I think it's more than that. I think it might be close to 500. Thousand, that is. So, you know, making money off your missions is important. You go walk down here, see if there's any more delicious metallic ores for us to hoover up. Not sure. Time for honks? Yes, it's time for honks. It's the honk hour. It's the sound of money! But yeah, in all honesty, there's a little bit of, like, the biggest, uh, the biggest design tension in this game, in a lot of ways, is the tension between designing hercs that are ideal for fighting and designing hercs that are ideal for mining. Um, I'm literally just gonna send Doom back. Okay. Grab that. Shield centered. And let's see if there's any more ore to be found. Okay, good. We've found a found a path we can use to move quickly. For a while at least. Yeah, just get in the boat. Yes. You also get in the boat. Don't want to bother with you. You head that way. You head this way. It does not help, of course, that we're currently in the part of the game where we don't have any speed boosts for our Hercs, really. Um, you do get speed boosts later. Aha! I knew there was another ore field. You do get more speed boosts later. But uh, right now, we don't have access to them, and so our Hercs are, ironically, kind of the slowest that they'll ever be. Uh, later on, we'll be able to get a hold of systems that let our fighting Hercs move quicker in different situations. Systems. And it will all be a lot easier from there to move around and harvest ore. And we will spend fewer turns on it. Oh, there's actually a lot of ore left on the map right now. But yeah, we'll, our, our honk efficiency will increase as this game goes on. Right now, honk efficiency is low. Keep going. Keep that train rolling. Keep picking up that ore. You, sir. Yep. Yep. There we go. Alrighty. Good job, team. I knew you had it in you, and by it I meant ore, and by in you I mean literally inside the hoppers that I have installed in your hurts for the purpose of being stuffed full of ore. are. Oh, you're over here, aren't you? Uh, you have an empty... Yeah, go ahead. Go on with you. Why 
why did you follow that weird path? Alright, you have... Yeah, you can go over there. You're full up. Lovely jubbly. Keep going. Keep the mining train a rolling. Bobble is also about to be filled up. That's 30 units, that's 20 units. Alright, go grab that, then you're full. You, sir, are about to take 78 years to get over here. And I take personal offense at that. And it's a shame because it's going to leave this hopper totally empty, but I think we're just going to not wait for him to do that because, as mentioned, it's going to be like, well, maybe we will. Because everybody else is full, and this asshole is going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, like, uh, hold on. Movement. Yes. Keep going. Yeah, that's it. Keep going. Come on. Pump those stubby Herculean legs. All right. All right. Hey, there we go. You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. Don't go around. Yep, that's it. Hoover it all up. Suck it up your schnoz. Perfect. All right, here we go. Back to Herc Base with 70,000 space dollars. This is such a good game. It is indeed. It's, it's a great game. I really like Mission Force Cyberstorm. Like, yes, it has its limits, obviously. It has the honking sound. Uh, you know, it has a lot of stuff that you end up... It has some busy work to it. But in terms of a relaxing, like, just a simulation... Shooty shooty bang bang strategy game. There's really. There's not a whole lot like it. It's honestly legitimately better than most entries into this particular genre are. Um, do I need a resupply drone on this guy? I don't think so. But there's really not much harm having it. So basically, what resupply drones do is. They let you use them to refill your missiles and cannon ammunition if the Herc carrier is on the field and you're within a certain range. So the basic, like, V1 has a range of only 10 hexes, uh, whereas the V5 has a range of 40 hexes and can be used 10 times in a single mission. Um, now, the issue is this almost never is relevant because in most missions where... So, right, like, like there's several types of missions, right? You have mining missions where you're unlikely to use that much ammunition because there's not that many enemies on the field. You have base defense missions and quick assaults where the carrier is not on the field and so resupply drones can't be used. You have um, missions that are just you fighting a bunch of cybrids in the middle of the map, in which case resupply drones might be useful, but again, you're unlikely to burn through all of your ammunition. And then you have base assault missions where you're attacking a cybrid base, and in that case, you may well burn through all your ammunition and the Herc Carrier is on the field, but at the same time, uh, you might not be within that range anymore. And if you are, you probably have something better to do with your energy than spend it restocking your ammunition, like trying not to die. So, you know, it's just, it's one of those items that I look at it every now and then when I play and I'm like, I kind of want to use this because it seems like it should be useful, but the way the game ends up working out, it's actually not. I'm just going to pop another zero signal dampener on Doom, and uh, yeah, I think that'll be a decent little build here. I'm going to save this for right now as Doom. And let's see what that costs. Let us load Doom. Doom costs 77 grand. That's actually not that bad. With four compression lasers, that's a good bit of long-range laser firepower. So that's decent. 
Um, what I might actually do, and what I will do later on is, later on when I when I build the, the demons that I'm going to use for the final mission in this system, uh, these are going to be replaced with heavy plasma cannons. So HP cannons are basically this weapon, but they do twice as much damage. So they do up to 300 damage versus shields and 150 versus armor. They have short range, but within that range, they're incredibly powerful. Uh, and I think they're very useful when you're fighting the larger cybrids, so the Nihiluses, Hades, etc. Because they, they, you know, they've got that wump, that muscle, that oomph to them, which uh, most other weapons don't have. And uh, killing, killing things once their shields are down is often the limiter. In fact, if the Doom costs 77,000, I think I'm going to sell Shrek and upgrade to a demon. Yeah, we're moving into the part of the game where we're doing more military activity. So let me just... I'm just going to do that. Purchased. Somebody give me a name for this second demon, please. Because I'm not calling it Doom 1. That's not how this goes. Happy Bunch. No, 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 no. I think I think that's the one. I think that's the one. Yep, yeah, that's uh. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's what we need. That that's what this this hurt needed. Happy Bunny. That's the name. That's definitely the one. Okay. Uh, let's make sure everybody's healed up. We're not clicking the recycle button. We are pulling all. And let's take Quabble here. We'll finish upgrading his energy, missile, and piloting. And yeah, 74, 74, 74. That's not bad. Who's not... Who was unlinked? Okay, Justin Smith has 70, 65, 85. Yeah, so Quabble, you link to Happy Bunny. Justin... Link to Doom and Happy Bunny best friends, exactly. They're just they're just the greatest of buds. Okay, so we've got six Hercs. We're gonna go ahead and save this game again real quick. And let's go on another military mission, shall we? Let's uh oh, we haven't been to Aura yet. Let's defend this installation on Aura. So Cybers are present, but not in great strength. We will be promoted upon mission completion. And, uh, yeah, let's do it. Launch initiated. Let's defend the base. Ooh, we got several cybers here. Okay. So we want to defend the base for eight turns. We have got a couple of Cerberus. Ah, the cybers have upgraded. See, they're V2. That means their weapons are upgraded. They're generally more dangerous. So. What do we got up there? A Genocide V1. Okay, so we've got V2s down here. Those are the ones that we want to kill quickly. Uh, the Cerebruses aren't as dangerous as the Genocites, so we want to take the Genocites out first. But we also want to draw fire to make sure they don't turn around when we're putting the actual weapons on them. Okay, well, I guess he just isn't going to turn around. Handy, that. Oh, missed with the missile. I should have known, it's in the name. Uh, really, 82% cannon, and you have 23% chance to hit at that range. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy town, USA. Perfect. Okay, 26% to hit him. Okay, so let's take out this Cerebrus now. There we go. Couple lasers onto him. Go ahead and 
it fire off those cannons. Weapon reloading. Let's drop the blast mortars on this guy just to get some cumulative damage. Uh, Weeb, come on down here. A couple missiles into him, and then you can fall back and hide behind the buildings. Nice. Are there any cybrids to the south? I don't see any. We're gonna do a little bit of cheeky mining. And I've got a couple of extra lasers, so I'm just gonna pop them off just in case I can hit something. Hey, nice. There you go, 120 extra damage. I'll take it. Okay, yeah, so the Genocide V2 has plasma cannons. Who's shooting at the colony hub? How dare you? Aha. Uh -huh. It's you. You are the culprit. Very rude, sir. Rude extremely. Set. Come on now. Okay, that was a hit. Good. Weapons unresponsive. Great. Let's get Quabble and Happy Bunny. Get a few little laser shots onto this gentleman. A few missiles, a laser or two, just to teach him what's what. Slap him around a little bit, show him who's boss. I, Justin, these are self-guided missiles. I'd really appreciate you not missing with them so much. Okay. Got some good damage there. Uh, we run away. And, uh, yeah, let's just uh, mine some more, shall we? Okay, so that is one of the more dangerous things that uh, Cybrids can do. Uh, he ran past me in order to fire at my rear shield side. Uh, very good tactics. I hate it. And anyone who does it to me, I, I, uh, want them to die. Perfect. Okay. Yep, excellent tactics. Really terrible. Hate it. Never want to see it again. Fucking cybers, am I right? Hey, hearts of Glad you could join. It's literally Doom Cannon. The Doom guy got mad because they killed his rabbit. I'm not sure that's actually Cannon. I think that's uh, I think that's Fanon, but it is quite popular. Unless that is actually canon in some ridiculous thing like the Doom Guy comic book, in which case I take it back. That's amazing. some of this here, uh, this here ore real quick. Compensate me for my trouble. Defray expenses, etc. I'm not gonna bother getting that other, uh, that other little patch up north. Oh, I lost some there. Nice. $48,000, I've been promoted to the rank of squad captain. It is actually canon. That's incredible. Amazing. Are the Cybrids playable? Not in this game. Uh, Cybrids are playable in Star Siege. There is a Cybrid campaign.
Doom Guy's friendship with Isabel from Animal Crossing. <laughs> All right, your success has been reported to Unitech Command, and we have been promoted to Squad Captain. So, lots of weapons this time, but the Overdrive node will probably be what changes the battlefield from here on out. Magnifies her drive system efficiency. It costs some power, but gets you additional movement. You want speed? You got it. Yes, that is what changes the battlefield, because that is what lets your big heavy hercs actually move around and do stuff. In the last Cybert War, the enemy got smarter. The Cybert's were able to act without direct programming from Prometheus. Our tech boys believe that the Cybert's are now tied into one another like a collective mind. This is not to say that we don't still believe in the existence of a huge Prometheus entity somewhere out there. We'll continue our search for it based on our past experience with the Cybert's. There are still some of you running your troops like cowboys out there. Hit and run with minimal losses is still the best tactic. Keep your objective in mind and stop thinking about bounties. Never. I will never do that. I see any more of this type of command and I'll recycle you like a bioderm. And our bioderm for this promotion is an actual and literal monkey. Subject displays adequate weapon skills and an exceptional rating in piloting hercs. Experiments with plasmatter have been discontinued due to the irreconcilable issue of instability. Yes, it's a... This is... Th this is... This is Boto. Boto is a monkey. Uh, Boto starts with 90 piloting. And can be upgraded to 94 immediately. Immediately. All of Boto's other skills are trash, and he only lives two years. But he does have a 94 piloting rating. <laughs> why? Why? I don't. I, I don't think I get that reference there. What? What is the reference? To, what? What does King Louis mean in this context? The context of a monkey. What does? Why? Why is King Louis the name that everyone is immediately jumping to? Oh, the, the, oh, the, the jungle book. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's, the, that's, yeah, we could, there we go, this is, that's King Louie. All right, so, okay, so, yeah, so that's what he does. He just, he doesn't shoot guns, he just pilots a scout and or a mining drone. So, Boto is going in the mining bot. Uh, we're gonna heal everybody up real quick, because they've degraded a little bit. And good old Louie... Louie Louie is going in the fast chat. Uh, it's been about three hours, so I'm actually gonna end this here without uh, doing another mission, but just to point out something about the new technology, so you see how I left this slot empty? Yeah. So overdrive node raises speed to 100. That may not seem like a ton, it's actually a significant amount. Also, we now have partial nano repair, which gives us 250% repair. So we're gonna insert a partial nano repair there. And then up here, we now have access to the EMP Beamer, which does 250 shield damage at 15 range, no armor damage. It's an advanced tech weapon. It's a very good one. The PBW, which is a very interesting weapon. It only has a max range of 13, but it does exactly even damage to shields and armor, 100 and 100. And the HP Cannon, which is uh, literally two plasma cannons welded together. Uh, it does 300 damage to shields, 150 to armor at 9 range. So its damage does drop off quite quickly with range, but at close range, it's very, very powerful. We also have the SCX Silas, which does more damage in general than the 1000 did. Uh, you can't put it in your lower hands, though. So with demons, you have to choose whether you want your upper arms to be... Uh, SCX Seelays or uh, HP Cannons, basically. Uh, HP Cannons do more overall damage, but have much shorter range. SCXs have 15 range, uh, and they also do solid damage versus armor. So in terms of, like, balance, these are probably a better weapon, but the HP Cannons are quite strong if what you want is a Herc that's going to walk up close to a bunch of Cybrids and just smash them up. Uh, I'm gonna give Doom HP cannons. I am gonna need to get a plasma weapon using, uh, uh, 
Bioderm. I'm also can upgrade his reactor. So now he goes up to 132 speed, which is fantastic. And it means I can afford to give him the shield 2400. Lowers his speed back down, but not as much as it was. We can also go up to the Crystal MX sensor, which gives him two extra hexes of sight. And the Iridium battery. So everything in general is being upgraded right now, except for life support. Uh, and yeah, so this is a solid little, little build. Uh, we can put EMP beamers on the lower hands if we want. That will give us a significant amount more damage versus shields. Uh, it does mean you have to readjust your site, your, uh, bioderm allocations, because if we give this guy HP cannons and EMP beamers, that means he doesn't use the energy skill anymore. He uses advanced tech, plasma, and missile. So then you have to go in and readjust your pilots, which is actually pretty good. <laughs> this is a weird bio jerk. <laughs> when do I stream? Never asked. No. Okay, so I stream, generally I stream Sunday afternoons, and I often also stream during the week. I try to stream on Wednesday evenings after work. I don't always make it. Sometimes it's Thursdays. Sometimes there's no stream at all, etc., etc. Um, I have this bot. I don't know why this bot shows up right now. It's the same fucking bot. It shows up like every time, and I don't understand it. But anyway, okay. So this is kind of where we're at right now with our uh, our high end demons. Um, I'm gonna swap these. I'm gonna leave these as the SC1000 Celays, I guess, because having energy weapons is not a bad idea. And they do, they do decent damage. Well, I could go with the, um... I could go EMP Beamer or PBW. When I played this game as a child, my, like, one of my favorite builds was this. It was this exact thing. Two Heavy Plasma Cannons, two PBWs. This makes this a short-range Herc that has a lot of armor damage and can potentially kill three or four small Cybers in one turn. Um, the HP cannons can easily kill a Spectre each with one shot. The PBWs can potentially knock down shields and uh, let the missile SP2s score kills. Uh, this guy can kill a couple of uh, a couple of Cybrids at a time. But uh, probably what I'll do here is actually I'll just swap these out for EMP Beamers. That's an even trade, so it doesn't cost any money to do that. And then if we save this hurt configuration as Doom, we can see exactly how much money it costs. Uh, the, that's the old Doom, so what we can do here is we can load the new Doom. And you can see that costs almost a hundred grand. But it's an extremely powerful Herc, if you have a driver who has those particular skills. Plasma, advanced uh, weapons, and missile. Uh, this makes for a very, very powerful Herc indeed. But that is going to be the stream for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you liked it. Uh, I plan to keep playing this game. This game is actually quite short. We're already, like, probably 25% of the way through it. Um, there's gonna be... Obviously, we have to fight the Cyber Command Center, which takes a little bit. Uh, but we should be able to do that next time if we do another stream like this. So, and, uh, look out for more Shadowrun and more other stuff coming up, uh, pretty soon. Including possibly some actual videos, not streams which will be coming up shortly. If you're on my Discord server, you know what those videos will be about. But thanks for watching. Leave a like on the stream. I am going to go have uh, have Sunday dinner, and I will talk to y'all another time. Take it easy.